There once was a man from Bombay who fashioned a cunt out of clay, but the heat from his prick turned the clay into brick and chafed all his foreskin away. Scott, this is your game, not mine. <laughs> I have a special, 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 special encounter just for you. Is it a 30 by 30 foot room? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. It is a special Sunday edition of Murder Hobo Inc. I'm your uh, dungeon master for the night, uh, DM Poobah. And uh, here with me tonight, we have uh, several volunteers to decide to play uh, an old school rendition of what do we call this game? Yeah. D&D. Uh, th- 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 this one here. And and uh, oh, so we're newer. playing the devil's yeah, game. I know. We're we're, we're at, that's the, there. We go. That's a bit older. There you go. There. Okay. And uh, and we'll be playing up to um, um, that rule part right there. So I stopped there, and um, that's that's basically what we're doing. So thank you all very much um, for uh, joining us tonight. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. We have things you can buy that have stick figures stabbing each other in the back. They're kind of cool. Yeah, that, and that's I, it's like it's some tiny URL thing. It's and that's and that's at Murder Hobo Inc. Something tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. RPG swag. There I think it's uh, above it you, Scott. I'm not sure on the screen. So it's so it's above me. So what we've been doing through the uh, month of December, we've been kind of playing through some different systems. Uh, last last weekend we had Kyle do a five E Christmassy special. Tonight we're having myself go uh, kind of a back in um, um, a back in time version back to the 1977. Gen Con tournament game of um, Lost Caverns of the Soja Camp. Obviously, we're not going to have a chance to play that entire adventure time, but we are playing with uh, original D&D, AD&D rules, uh, 1E all the way with uh, Glorious to hit armor class zero or FACO, as has been called for, uh, in, in as well as the armor tables as well, uh, and all of the initiative blah, blah, blah. segment you, glory. You are muted. That you is that. No totally nuts and we have a peanut gallery as well which is nice to know and that's that's wonderful so i'll, I'll go ahead and have us all uh have us all uh, introduce ourselves if we can um starting with um uh, let's let's just start with uh let's just start with hodar the wizard of eh. folks you know who i am uh I DM'd earlier, if you watched that debacle, uh, out, a.k.a. shit show. Uh, my name is Frank. Tonight I will be playing Hodar, Wizard of, yeah, you know. Uh, I'm looking for a 30 by 30 foot room to emblazon these individuals to their glory. Although don't tell them that I plan on killing them. That's a secret between us. Uh, I like Scott have played since first E, so uh, I knocked the rust off. Let's see how I do. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me? Uh, if you ever want to play in a one shot or on the talk show, MOBO Inc., Gmail or Twitter, Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we will now go to, I would try to pronounce the, I mean, to say Dong. Is, is that okay? Can I just go with Dong? <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Don Janeer on all the social media, uh, DM and been playing since the Red Box. So been around for a while. Um, tonight I am playing. Firkin Hammerfall. Uh, Firkin. Firkin Hammerfall. I uh, won't be firking around very much. Just going to let the hammer fall all night long. Um, and apparently he's going to have this kind of accent that just happened right now while I'm talking. So <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm doing. Swinging the hammer when, uh, when the people live through the cloud of fire and destruction that the wizard of meh is doing. Uh, that's um, that. That's a great. I, I don't know what tribe of dwarves have that accent, but uh, it's a welcome change from uh, every other dwarf that has that that speaks like well, that. Oh, yeah, no, it's always a bit of a like a mashup when you're cooking Scots all the time. At such a- right, sure. right, exactly. It, I, I I can't talk. I, I start talking like a dwarf, and that's exactly. How I sound. Yeah, no, um, I'm thinking Firkin is from up up north, uh, somewhere near some frost giants. Uh, and that's where he gets the little bit of the Minnesota Swedish conversation thing. 
Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And then from uh, then from uh, from Brazil, we have our friend um, Mat- Mateus. <laughs> Mateus. Uh, I didn't even know we had people watching this. I thought only one or two, Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's one, my first Matt. time playing, and I'm playing as Zinatar. I think I yeah. call him Zini for short. That and works. a cleric who I thought I could play off as a side fortune teller, but I don't. Go for it. Yeah, that's fine. And that's that's all about you could do that, no problem. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. And that's it. I just discovered I have armor, so that's cool. And <laughs> you have armor that's and a armor. nice mace. No, you do have a good mace. You do have a morning good mace. star. A morning star. Morning star. Yes, everyone. exactly. A morning star. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And then we have our our thief, Discotech, Discotech, who has the it, thieves guild. Yes, yes, and it and it is Discotech. The N is silent, just like me, because I'll be creeping up into your DMs. Mm. <laughs> Cloud killing his ass right now. <laughs> my my tits are wider than I am tall, and I am just fabulous. Please tell me you're a female. <laughs> yes, yes, she is a yeah. female, uh, quite uh, quite um, well known uh, in her parts, which are ample. I, um, I I was going to say I I am very familiar with my parts. Very very familiar with her parts at all. So that is our that is our motley crew tonight. I will uh, give us a bit of uh, give, give us a bit of background. So we had started this out of nothing. So I'm trying to basically invent a backstory here on the fly, um, which is great, which is absolutely <laughs> great. This is um, this is a bit of an homage to uh, to probably my favorite module of all time, which is uh, S4 Lost Caverns of Soge Camp. Um, we're not playing as at the very start of it, which had a whole outdoor part, but instead we're playing as if our party, our intrepid adventurers, had a, originally started off with seven. Seven marrying people went down into the caverns and only four remain. So speaking to the party, you find yourself after having getting chased out of a very difficult battle with a Gorgamera, a terrible, terrible monster that would look to be half bull, half or one third dragon, one third bull, and one third basilisk looking weird thing. It, it, lion maybe, it was a, like a lion basilisk gorgon, not really a bull, more of a gorgon. So this was a very difficult fight for you. Your bard, uh, very, um, who was discontex, sorry, discotex, um, friend. Lover. My, you know, my, my bottom bitch. Let's just say that, that that'll be fine. Um, quickly cast teleport and fled the battlefield. Um, the other, uh, your ranger uh, was chomping in his jaws uh, and you four made a quick escape down, uh, down a stairway that you had found. Um, and right as you had made that major escape down, uh, the Gorgomera closed in from behind. It was too big to follow you, but it did start clawing at the uh, start clawing at the um, um, uh, cave to basically cause a cave in, sealing you in place. Um, and with no room to go but forward, you made your way down the stairs about maybe two or three hundred feet. Firkin is going to understand this because he uh, he understands the stonework of the caverns. Um, a lot of this is all natural, but the, the, the steps that you have seem to be quite, um, quite shaped by, by human hands. So this is obviously a, an actual stairway down that has been shaped by human hands uh, through, through a cavern system. There's confidence that there's no way back up. You make your, you've made your way down for about maybe, maybe 100 feet came to kind of like a little chamber and then you can see beneath you, you have a landing about 30 to 40 feet beneath you. You have a landing into what looks to be another cavern. 
you decided that this was going to be a good place as any because you have like a 15 foot little alcove here at the top um you know before you descend this last 30 feet into this other cavern where you've decided to take a rest catch your breath get all your spell slots back rememorize your spells heal yourself up a little bit eat a little bit rested so you're rested you've gotten all your spell slots back but you know there's no way out except forward. So you're about 30 feet away after just waking, just waking up, eating some iron rations, no fire. You know that there's a little bit of a draft and a couple of torches down there. Strangely enough, someone has lit torches in the, in the little, little cavern below you, about 30 feet. So I'm going to turn the, uh, the actions over to you. You have a 30-foot stairway leading down, basically facing the direction, and Farrakhan's going to take out his, uh, his um, you know, lodestone and some, and some iron ferrite, and you uh, can see that the general direction that you're heading is west. So west, going down. What would the party like to do? Can I throw some sand to try and determine the direction of air movement? Yes, you may. It's um, there's a there's a slight draft that's coming um, that that that's coming down. Um, you know, you, you can see a little bit. Uh, the air is cold, right? So so there seems to be maybe some water. You knew that there was some water above you, and that water above you cooled the air to the point where you have a little bit of draft that's still seeking through small little areas uh, in cracks in the walls and stuff like that. That cooling air is is falling, so that's causing a little bit of a draft of a little bit colder air to be moving from your back forward. So you do feel a slight draft at your back. Okay, but but that's, no, but that's, no that's, big that was the way out. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. If you would have <laughs> big Lebowski'd me, I would have beat your ass. <laughs> so we have a hole in the ground. Yeah, you, you, you've been in a cavern, you've been adventuring, you've slayed some monsters, you've taken some losses, you're you know, about I'm midway to get through this. Out of here. You're, you're trying to get out, but the way behind you, you know, isn't good. But you're hoping that if you get down and get to this one place where this mythical treasure is supposed to be, that you're going to find, you know, a teleport spell uh, or some oh. or a gate that, that that's going to get you back, some type of portal. Because you know that this used to be the, the, the lair of a very prominent uh, wizard, a very prominent witch. Um, her name was Igville. And she used to, she had she had all of these different ways to be able to move around the planes and stuff. So you're pretty confident that if you can get to her her laboratory, her her like center area, that you're going to find enough magic and you're going to find some items that can get you out of there. Okay, so well, I would know where she was called Kasha, but. The thing that I'm thinking about right now is how long do torches burn for uh, people in this part of the world? Six hours. One hour is six okay. hours. Because we rested and the torches are still lit down there, and that just makes me think, people. Now, now I'm not a smart person, but I might surmise that those aren't mat necessarily natural torches. You're about thirty feet away, so you can't really is tell. It just her. Luke? I would like to. I would like to move silently. Okay. And check for traps along the stairs. Okay, give me give me two percentile dice roll, please. Uh, sixty six. Okay. And thirty. So the thirty move silently. You're able to move silently, no problem. Check for traps. I believe you're at sixty seven percent, so you're you're okay with that as well. You did not find any traps, and you're able to move silently down this, this set of stairs. You notice that as you move down slowly and slowly and slowly further down, it gets deeper, really, deeper, deeper, really and deeper. deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I had a whole different random thought going on there. Barry White's dungeon. <laughs> I believe you when that happens, you pronounce die. it dongin. <laughs> <laughs> the dongin. We're about to have to stick our ass in that pudding. But um, uh, but other than that... Um, I love that ass pudding. <laughs> oh, 
pod. <laughs> so, so uh, as you move your way down, you, the stench does get quite, quite pungent. You, is it you the dwarf can tell that, or is it the dungeon? <laughs> no, it's the dungeon, and you think it's uh, it's the smell of like rotting fish. Actually, it's 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 quite quite pungent. I, I have quite... I have shot a Coca Cola up in there within the last twenty four hours, so it's not me. Oh Lord! Wow. Okay, okay, that's good. So uh, uh, I, I will be bringing up the rear because I am Mister Squishy. Can't we just go down and that's it and pray? <laughs> yes. If you go down there right now, you should. Pr- <laughs> <laughs> no, I volunteer for going down. Okay, so um, just a quick. You wanted to see about the torches, real quick. These are oil torches. They're not magical torches, and um, they look to be, I don't want to say exactly well-maintained, but just when you can kind of get into range of being able to see that they're not magical torches, and this is not like a magical fire, it's a natural fire. Um, There's fairly decent circulation. It's just really, really stinky, but you can also um, kind of hear rustling and moving around uh, grunts and such as that, you know, you, you you think that there's some type of creatures down there. Um, you don't exactly know how many, but you think that's it. You're getting this really, really strong fish smell. Very, very strong fish smell. You smell that. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it. Either they're using fish oil on the torches or there's something slimy climbing around down there. Okay, Hammer, time to go talk to strangers. As he, t- as he talks, I would like to hide in shadows. Okay. Shake my hammer loose, get the javelins, hanging onto the javelins behind the shield, and I just start marching down the, the stairs. I'm not even going to attempt to be stealthy because I'm not capable of it. I go down with him because I've got faith. And that's all I have. <laughs> because you have faith. That, those, that's a great reason. That's a great thing to have. Is faith. Thanks, George Michael. Okay, so you're going to um, uh, discotheque. You're going to hide in the shadows. Give me a 30, 39. Okay, yeah, you're able to successfully. Now, you notice that that uh, I'll read this. You, you start walking into this. This is a low dome chamber. It's ceilings dripping with stalactite. So you're in a like a cavern, a, a natural cavern. Um, there are eight tunnels kind of c- coming out of this little central landing area that you see. Uh, a lot of rotting refuse, fungus, and this unpleasant, really, really, really unpleasant stench. And then you notice in the corners, you know, piles of piles of manure, not guano, not bat guano, but actual manure. And you realize what the manure comes from is that there are three troglodytes, one of them carrying a sword that uh, was kind of wandering around. And let's have um, let's have all of you roll the six sided dice, please. A D6. Oh, I have I had a four. Okay, so so no one surprises anyone. Um, you all just kind of come, come in and you're all, we're in various stages of, of, of being alert. Who has the highest, uh, who has the highest charisma? Probably, probably this good idea. There. Why don't you roll a percentile die? That, that's a 93. 93. Yeah. They, they, um, React except, ex- quite- except except I am hiding in shadows. Okay, okay, you're you're I, hiding yeah, in shadows. So, I, I was so the you're... one that walked down the stairs. So yeah, you were the one that walked down. That, that's <laughs> a good point. So Dong, why don't you roll a why don't you roll a percentile die for me? Uh, wow, we got a two. A two. So they hate you. I mean, they really hate you. They they. You, they see you and there's this like this frothing rage that starts coming out of their mouth and they start beating their chests and stomping the feet and they just charge at you as fast as they can with their with their swords drawn high. There's three of them. Just beat them. 
so, going to take two steps back up the steps so they have a funnel. Uh, get my shield up, hammer ready. Okay, shield up, hammer ready. Um, we're, we're going to be in combat, so uh, neither one, no one's surprised. No one's trying to parlay, and they have an immediate negative reaction. The reason I'm stopping here a little bit and kind of explaining the actions that in, in – I'm going to not do this every time, but this is the first time. If you watch Murder Hobo Wink, it's a little bit different in uh, first edition. You have things like NPC reaction, and you always have to check for things such as surprise to understand how your NPCs are going to react to you. So we made those two. This puts us immediately into combat. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and roll initiative, please. D6s. Everyone? Yes, everyone, please. Six. Oh. So the six takes it, they roll the four because it's party initiative. It's not individual initiative. That's another difference from, uh, from uh, first edition and 5e is that it's once one party goes and then the next party goes. So I will have each of you what's called declaring your intentions. What are your intentions to do? Because different things have to take different amounts of time uh, in one. I have, a, I have a total of eight. Does that matter, Scott? It, it would I have a total there, of eight. It would if there were a tie. If you had tied, then you would add yours. Okay. Okay. okay? There, it would if you okay. were a tie. Uh, and if there were a tie, you would take that in. That would actually speed up your segment speed for whatever you wanted to do. So it would matter if there were a tie or if there was a surprise, right? If your if your initiative were faster than you had a higher response on that than theirs, then you would still be able to attack during their surprise round. But since there was no tie, you there was no surprise, the party clearly won initiative with someone rolling a six, then all of you get to go. Okay. That's that's how it goes. All of you get to go. Battle is, continue, is considered to be simultaneous. So the way we do is we declare intentions as to what you would like to do, and then, uh, and, then we, and then we process from there. So starting in any order that the party would like to, what would you all – I also have to roll for distance. Sorry. Magic missile. So you're about, you're about maybe 30 feet away. It's like once you came down, there's a, like a little, little kind of – I don't want to say a cavern, but like a little – yeah, you know, it's a cavern, like a little area off. When you get to the landing, you look to the right, which would be towards your north, and that's where you see these three troglodytes. One of them is bigger than the other and carrying a sword. The other two just, you know, have their claws and their teeth, and they're and they're coming at you there. So, um, Hodar is going to do magic missile. Matthews, I'm just okay. going to stay behind Dong. And I'm going to stay behind here, Dong. You. My friends. Okay. Am so, I am I able to? You're you're in the shadows. They have not noticed you yet. Right. Am I able to get behind? Am, is there one in essentially that I'm behind? You would be able, due to all the stalactites and stalagmites on the ground, you would have to use a move silently roll. But you would be able to to maintain your hiding in shadows. And for every 40 feet of movement in your 30 feet, if you wanted to try to get behind someone, you could try the maneuver for a backstab. You can't. Okay. You would, you would uh, or, have, you, you or, would only... or, or if I or if I wanted to or if I wanted to try and lose a plus two arrow. You could do that as well. You could do that as well. So yes. that, that, that's that's why I'm asking, is there one that's effectively in front of me that I'm behind? Um no. They're all they're all to your front. The reaction was such was so negative. They they saw they 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 saw Dong and got so pissed. That, okay. That. No, no. Oh, oh, but so so. But Honestly, they, I get that reaction a lot. But but no, you're saying they've moved in front of me, so now I'm behind them. No, no, no. It's it's that you're in the shadows off to the side. But they're all in front of you, and none of them have their back to you. You so, would have so, to maneuver. So, so we're, we're effectively, to maneuver to we're get effectively to your back. in a line. Effectively, just the okay. just the shape. There's a there's like a okay. ten foot opening into this larger cavern, um, okay. and you would have to maneuver to your back. And to do that, you would have to have a successful, you know, move silently roll in order to do that. But it would be possible to do. 
So I, there's I, enough I, natural cover. That's what I'm saying. Because okay. we've because we've worked together before, um, and I know Disco's moves. Um, I'm going to move into the room um, and sort of position myself to draw them towards me because they hate on me a bunch and hopefully leave their backs open to the rest of the group. But I'll be I'll be waiting with my hammer if anybody gets within arm's reach. Can I heal for an afar or do I have to be close to the person? Uh, depends on the spell. So so we got three trying when I Hodar, your your intention is to cast magic missile, correct? Four hit points. Okay. At the lesser. Okay, okay. Discotech, you are um I, I would like no knowing again, knowing knowing our relationship, I would like to try and I'll I'll take a move silently to try and get behind the rear one. Okay, or, or, so the, or what or what would effectively be, I guess, the one closest to me, like I said, if we're all in the line. Okay, okay. And Don and, 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 and then and then doing that, I'd like to try and shank him. Yeah, try 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 to gank him there. Dong, you are you are um because because they're basically running at you. You are you are in, ready to to uh, smash them once they get there. Okay, right, Mateus. Uh, can I just stay behind him <laughs> and wait? Yes, yes, yes. You, wait, you, I have a maze, don't I have? You you have a morning star. We, we can fight shoulder to shoulder. I would fight too. I also want okay. to fight. Okay. 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 So, so the two males, all right, are the ones that are rushing with this, with their claws. And then the one with the sword is kind of in their back that they're, that is kind of, you know, really confidently kind of moving forward, you know, like this. He thinks he's all, he really, really thinks he's important. So as he closes, um, since you have a prepared chance to go ahead and swing, um, Dong, why don't you at their, um, give me uh, versus an armor class of five and a, um, let me think if I can pull this up here correctly. Birkin, the way this works for combat, under monster with armor, this is gonna be melee, right? Just uh, to make sure there's a no in there. For modified um, armor class, put in five and base armor class put in five, and then hit F9, because I have a crappy little spreadsheet there. I have, a, I have a six is what you need to hit with your hammer. All right. I'll have to go with yours. Mine's not adjusting, uh, which I got a six. OK, that's <laughs> just good. All right, so your base damage is 2d4 plus 4, so why don't you roll 2d4 plus 4? Nice. 11. Ooh, that is nice. That is a mighty hit with that hammer. A strong, mighty hit with that hammer. And, uh, and the, the, uh, the atrog, the, uh, the atrog, he takes a, takes a crushing blow from the hammer to the, to the left shoulder and is quite, quite surprised. Um, Mateus, you would be next. Um, and I'm going to have you here where, no, not that one. Where is Zenithar? I'm going to pull up your sheet. Okay. One second here. I've got to enable editing. All right. Under base armor class, it's also, you have one of the males, also five. So five, that's a no. I'm going to hit function F9. I have you as an eight with a 20-sided die to hit, please. Four. Four. So you, you, you take a mighty swing with your morning star, and you miss, unfortunately. Sails over his head, which he was lucky because he, he did not want to get hit very well um, um, uh, twice. Uh, Hodar. Um, nope. Your magic missile um, does four hit points at ninth level. What does magic missile do? Let's give our uh, audience a quick uh, explanation difference between 5e magic missile and 1e magic missile. 1d4 plus 1. 1d4 plus 1. At ninth level, you don't get 
any more than that. You don't get how, like how many how many missiles? how many missiles? Uh shit, I looked it up, but now it's gone. <clears throat> uh, magic missile two E damage one D four. At what oh sorry. Uh, at what level? Yeah. At what level? Uh, two at third level, three at five, five missiles at ninth level. So five times four is 20 hit points of damage. 20 hit points of damage. Where are you, where are you putting those 20 hit points of damage? The one that was already hit, the one that is. I'm going to go 10 and 10 on the guys with the claws. Cause they're obviously the weaker ones. Okay. So one of the ones with the claws goes down the one that was you're welcome everybody i've got this <laughs> <laughs> so the one the one that was hit by fear can goes down with the three of the missiles <laughs> going into them and uh piercing the places where the hammer didn't get uh and then the other one um takes two two missiles go into that one and do uh do a fairly uh good number on it as well and they're they're you know, maybe slightly, slightly out of sorts a little bit, perhaps uh, not expecting such a strong, such a strong attack uh, at the first, especially they haven't got a chance to do anything. Discotech, give me a um, a move silently roll, please. Twenty three. Twenty three. You were able to successfully move silently while still in the shadows and sneak up on your choice. Either the the champion that's wielding the broadsword, or the one that took the two magic missile hits and is kind of close to going. So, uh, well, I, I had already called that I was doing the one closest to me. So, is that the one that's yeah. down? That's the one that's down. And in one okay. e, you 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 can change your target. Okay, then I'm going after the then I'm going after the champion because I think I get triple damage. You do, you do. So if you hit, triple damage. And what we're looking at, um, uh, where is Disco Tech? Base AC of four, modified AC of four, a medium sized enemy target. He Base is AC not wearing four, armor. Modified four. I rolled a 14. You hit. So let's do one d six plus. Four. And I rolled a I rolled a six on my d six, which I think is one d six plus one plus three, which is ten, which is thirty. That is correct. And with thirty, the champion gets a trident. All three blades pierce through its side and go right in, and you see the three little bits of little trident poke out through the heart, and he didn't even see it coming didn't even see it coming and he just kind of stops where he's going right there grunts three times there's a bit of blood and bile and crap goes through and he falls down on the ground dead as a doornail as now the, now now you said i get three attacks per two rounds you can choose to, to it's as long as he's within your movement allotment of forty feet, and this other one is, you could take you could take another round, but this would be a this would be a straight up attack, and but, not. But I but I want to use my my other two attacks. Okay, so you would have and, to and, and 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 then and then I'll halt next round. No, you 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 do have to. You can't do all three in one. It has to be. Oh, a max okay, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, That's, I'll, it's, it's I'll, every I'll, two take, rounds. I'll take, I'll, I'll take so one. You can take one. Now, your offhand, you do have the chance to dual weld because you do have a short sword that you have. Correct. So and that, 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 that was kind of kind of my intention before I realized that that was supposed to be my no, intention. No, no, it's, it's, it's kind of the part of the attack action is that, you know, three, you know, one attack would be with both hands. Okay. So I didn't. That makes sense. Well, I didn't quite realize what we were doing, but I rolled a 12. Okay, so you rolled a 12 um, against AC5. That will hit with that one again, but you're not going to get the big, the big, huge, enormous damage. But, but I, I, roll, I rolled a 2, and do I still get plus 4? No, if you rolled a 2, I've already accounted for that. You're going to miss with your second attack. Well, well, no, I rolled a 12 to hit. 
Okay, okay. I'm sorry. You rolled the 12 to hit. Yes, that hits. You only yeah, needed and, an and, and I rolled a two on my D6. And um, then do I get then do I get plus You still one get your damage three? modifier, yes. Okay. Plus so I so, so I do a total six of six more points six, of damage. Yeah, okay. Six more points of damage. And that puts down the last drug that I cool. That puts now, down the last now you're that. welcome. You're welcome, Hoder. Mine is all. So, so you have a magic missile has been cast. We backstabbed. So that was a pretty good explanation of 1E mechanics right there. Sneak into the back, backstab. So one difference between 1E and 5E is that you cannot, it's not the sneak attack is not if you're engaged with someone else, you have to actually sneak up on their back. Okay. If, and you if have I would have failed that move, move I, if I would have failed that move silently, I wouldn't have gotten that. You would not have gotten there. Exactly correctly. Exactly correctly. And and uh, as you see, we're not adding a lot of things to our dice roll. Instead, you modify what it takes, and then it just gives you a straight number to hit. That is that is one of the larger things. So now you've killed the three troglodytes. Um, the one trog there. Uh, did, well, while did I'm carry... standing over the champion as as the thief. And I see what he's got all up in his shit. Yeah, he, he has a really nice broadsword. A really, really, really nice broadsword. Um, you're kind of surprised to see it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's of tremendous quality. You know, you um, well carved. Can I, can, uh, I use, can I use my trident? Can I, can I use my trident to detect magic? Yes, you can, if you so choose. And it, it does radiate magic. That's it. I want to give it to. I want to give it to Donganier. Okay. Okay. You can. You can give. Or it at to least, the or at least, direct his attention towards it. So uh, I walk up and it's like, "Oh, that is pretty nice blade." And stack the hammer in the back of the shield. Pick it up. Okay. It's a shame you can't use it, but I'll put it somewhere useful, like in an enemy. Okay. I was going to say, I, I always do appreciate that when you put it in an enemy. That's that's good. But the other thing you hear, you do hear the plaintive cry of a couple of troglodyte babies, some some little baby trogs, about maybe three of them. Um, I mean, little, just just wee little ones, about like this. And you think that is actually the center of the smell. The smell is coming from these three little troglodyte babies that have been eating a bunch of dead, rotted fish and pooping uh, on themselves. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to drag the champion over towards them and go, here you go, little fellas. This will taste better than those stinky fishes. Do we know they, where they are? They're, they're, they're kind of off in like a little, like a little, uh, the main Al tower that you're in right now, like a little alcove off to the side. Yeah. I go over and admire them. One of them starts trying to starts trying to you know Nurse. bite at your foot, <laughs> and the other one starts. I mean, like ah, you just kind of like a little dog, you know, kind of like a little puppy would do. You know, I will put my dagger through their skulls. <laughs> oh, kid, kids bake them this one. I don't, I don't see an alignment well, 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 on here, so I'm going my way. <laughs> well, well, while he's doing that to two, I'll finish the third. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, uh, so you, uh, you, Hodar, you, you take your dagger and stab it through the knives of these babies. Uh, so I... <laughs> That's my religion. <sighs> you could have thrown them at some enemy. Or I, I, like I, I could I, have, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm lawful neutral, and my law is no witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, that that th th that kind of is our first little bit of combat there, just to give you an understanding of uh, you 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 do look around and there's nothing of value here that you see, just piles of manure, uh, piles of trash, piles of refuse. These three little babies. You kind of wonder where the females were, but you know maybe troglodytes lay eggs, and who knows? You, none of you guys are actually very understanding of or okay. have a lot of knowledge. On troglodyte, maybe they just spontaneously lay eggs, and you know, yeah, who, who knows? Asexual reproduction, it happens. You know, who knows? Okay, you, can I, can I, uh, as 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 the whore, can I try and like Jimmy opens one's junk and see if it does? 
Why? Can try. While he you looks around, try. I'm going to go ahead and look around for an exit. <laughs> you see, um, while, why don't you give me a percentile roll? Um, this dude, check for traps. Me? Uh, 53. Oh. Yeah, no, disco tech. Oh. Uh, 32. Uh, a 32. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you're able to get past the levels of the scales and such as that. And the, they're all, two of them are male. But, but, but I'm not, but I'm not able to Admiral Akbar it. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not able to Admiral Akbar it. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to It's a, it's a trap. Out. <laughs> it's Philippines. It's a trap. No. One of the ones a female, but you didn't even kind of realize it. You thought it was a male, but it turned out it was a female. Huh. Who would have known? So as the exits from here, um, you could continue to move to your north. You could continue. Sorry. You could, as you moved into this room, that was a bit to your north. You can continue in that direction. Or you can continue going west, which is the direction of the stairs that were coming down. Or you can, you, you see a few rooms down or corridors that are heading generally down to the south. Yeah. One straight south, and then another one kind of maybe like southwest. So in general directions, you can move straight south, do west, do north, or do southwest. Those are the uh, four directions out of here. There was a, a spell called, I don't know, that had... That, like, I, I, I believe the smell was coming from what they were feeding the infants. Yeah. What? Is that is that what we determined? Yeah. The the, the infants themselves were stinky because they were full of poop. And uh, Isn't that they, fish like they were no, yeah, the they, sound. They, Where were the sounds coming from? Any sounds, sounds on those? The, the sounds were also coming coming from the, the the sounds were coming from the the sound of the the little baby troglodytes eating the fish. But none of the four passages. Can yeah. I cast a spell? There was a spell called or something augury yeah i was gonna say i love me a good augury i don't know how to do that but there was a spell uh you cast it and you can ask your deity uh for a course of action check i believe does that sound right scott that's basically what it is so so let's uh there, Augury. Kyle. I know the first edition rules. <laughs> Augury is going to be a exactly. It's a it's a first edition um, rule. Your divine in action in the immediate future will be for the benefit or harm of the party. Okay. Uh, That's it's, boring. Yeah. So it, it's it's kind of like a general direction saying that I would like to go north. Is that going to be to my benefit? or to my detriment. And you have roughly a 70% chance plus, I think 1% plus the, um, plus the level of the caster. So 72% at, you know, at, at level two mm. So You would have a 77% chance of getting an answer from your deity that you have to trust. You kind of have to believe. I have why, would your, why would your deity lie to you? You exactly. know? So you have that roughly seems- a seventy-seven percent chance of getting an answer as to a question like, "If I move this direction or if I go here, is that going to be to my benefit or detriment?" Don't and that's kind of what it is. So, so which, which path would you like? If you wish to do this, you would have to say which path would you like to go, mm-hmm. and then cast your augury spell, and then beseech your deity for guidance. Oh. Just a bet. Okay, so you want the deity to choose the path for you as to no, which would be. I'm asking the dong. Oh, oh, you're going to ask the dong. Oh, just a bet. I'm thinking if we keep going on the downward slope, we're probably headed in the right direction, south. Okay, I south. Guess, um... Okay, roll me uh, two d10s, or you should have some percentile dice. Two d10. Oh my god. Like nine and zero. So you're rolling 90. Um, you get nothing but dead silence from your deity. 
dead silence. You received no response whatsoever. The deity you are attempting to contact is unavailable. Please go ahead and leave a voicemail. <laughs> Your That's call is stone. very important to us. <laughs> Let's follow the deity's dog. Dog the deity. It's just so. I'm with Dun Donganir. If we're going down, let's go down. But I'll go okay. last. I'm a coward. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna go straight south. I'll, I'll do and, a detect. Can I do a detect traps? Yeah, sure. So marching uh, order is Disco, then me, then Zini, then Hodar. Yep. I, 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 I kind of like to again for the sake of brevity, unless otherwise mentioned, I'm probably gonna go first to try and. Yeah. Sc scout the surroundings. Is that cool? Works that for works. me. <laughs> okay. That works. Yeah. So I got a 32. That's good enough on your detect traps. You think the path is clear. It does affect your movement. You're moving around 20 feet per round instead of 40 to check, carefully check the area for traps. Yeah. Anyone that, anyone that wants to run past me is welcome to. <laughs> so, so you start to move down to the south. And you, it is kind of gently sloping down to the south. And then you make it about maybe 50 to 60 feet. And in that general path to the south, you kind of see it going off into a couple of different directions, more towards your right. So you can still continue to go straight, straight south. That It looks like it's going to end up, you see like a, like a glowing little area, um, maybe about 100 feet in the distance, glowing light, actually. Uh, far off in the distance, about okay. 100 feet, and then two sub-little caverns kind of branching off to the right a little bit, but they kind of look like those two would probably kind of, you know, like branch and then meet again, right? So you can continue keep well, going I, south. I think everyone knows that you don't always, I, I think everyone knows that you don't take the main path first because you don't want to backtrack, right? Right. So I'd kind of like to take the the closest mode, or the closest most right path, and continue to check for trap. Okay, you continue to move down this area, and um, you and and and, I'd, and and do I need to do another movie check? Because I'd also kind of like to be moving silently. I think, yes, either either move either move silently and um, or hide in shadows, whichever one you would feel comfortable with. I, I'd, I'd prefer to hide in shadows if possible, but kind of both. That's a 49. Okay, so move silently um, and hide in shadows. That's good. You need a 54 to continue to hide in the shadows. So as you're hiding in shadows, that's going to continue again to reduce your movement speed. If you're hiding in shadows and checking for traps, you're down to about maybe 10 feet every, you know, six seconds. Right. So, I was, I was, uh, oh, sorry, is, sorry. Is, is, is Ten feet a the, minute. Is the rest of the group keeping in step? I guess is my question. The rest of the group is keeping in step really fine. You're gently moving down towards the south. I mean, you took that first little corridor that's kind of a little bit off, and then you're following that, and it's kind of curving. Okay. So imagine yourself moving west. This is when you came down the okay. stairs. Then you turn south. And then now you're angling yourself back around almost as if you kept this up, this would be a big, long loop all the way back around if it continued, obviously, along that way. But that's kind of the angle that you're seeing. Firkin, this is what you recognize through your stonecraft being a dwarf, being a mountain dwarf, specifically understanding caverns, understanding how caverns are made, how water moves through rock. You're moving down and then slowly kind of making this curvature to the right that like i said it, and it almost seems to be like this was a like a like cut like water cut through you know stalactite so it's not no none of this is man-made this is all natural flowing rock that's going to follow the grade of the gently sloping downward tilt of the land that you kind of understand it's just kind of curving you kind of off to the right that eventually will you know you'll end up you know going straight, eventually you end up going straight west if you continue moving, you know, moving along. Okay. The I'll only thing this information, but I'm going to call ahead to Disco. Hey, Disco, I don't mean to tell you how to do your job, 
but we slowed down to napping speed. Um, at, we're, we made, in the last minute, we moved 10 feet and there's, I don't want to die of old age before we get uh, out of here. And <laughs> I'm, I live maybe 500 years, I'm just saying. Can we speed this maybe? It looks like this is just natural, no working. And nature doesn't build traps that I know of. But again, I can't tell you your job. No, no. If, if there's dissent, I'd gladly, I'd gladly double back. No, no worries. Well, the uh, it, it's it, it's it's not that it's tremendous. It's ten feet every minute is where you're is where you're going back. So it's it's checking the traps, stopping, waiting to see about you know if there's any differences in air movement, differences in air pressure. So 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 what I'm what I'm hearing is that Dungeoneer wants to move ahead of me. He's a that, dwarf. That's you know. what I'm good for. I'm happy to lead the way. Good okay. For. I'm going to continue to do what I was doing. <laughs> Split that party. No, um, you, this kind of moves on. You get about 60 feet, and then you come to Firkin. You're the first one that realizes this. You're in a 30 by 30 room. Hodar, here's your chance. Um, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're about 20 feet behind, but you, you spot, um, the, the natural cavern that you're in changes to a, a 30 by 30 square room with exits where you came from, which would have been the North because you're kind of moved to the South, East, West, and then straight South. So imagine a 30 by 30 square like this. You were moving like here, okay? And then it goes straight south, 30 by 30. You have an exit here, an exit to the south, and an exit to the west. So you're approaching from the north, 30 by 30, nothing in here at all. It's Dead silence, good. but this is not natural. Something right. carved. So as carved soon as I this. get to where it's being worked again, I'll go, I'll show back to the group. Hey, uh, Disco, now we got some places where people have put tools on things. This is definitely the place to start looking for things. Um, I mean, I can look too, but mostly when I look for things, I just hit them with a the hammer and see if they go exploding. I just rolled a nine on my hike on my sneak into shadows when he hollered back at me. Okay, so, so you're very much in the shadows and you're able to see that there's a strange set of tracks right on the outside of this that, 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 that you hadn't seen before, okay? Um, um, that was such a good role. While you're in the shadows, you notice something as well, that, uh, that a strange set of tracks that seem to have originated instead of, you know, from the direction that you're coming from, with, as far as you know, the only way into the caverns is the way that you came. But these boots were coming from the other direction. So something. Okay, so it, it does appear to be here. humanoid as opposed to draconic or. Yeah, uh, you're actually thinking these were plate, these look like the imprint of plate mail boots. So maybe other adventurers that had. And, and I didn't see before. plate mail boots on the tribalites. No. Okay. No. I'm also not wearing plate mail boots. I'm wearing plate mail boots. I'm wearing you fuzzy are, slippers with bunnies on them. Fuzzy slippers with bunnies on them. Very good. So by now, after checking, you know, very slowly for traps and staying in the shadows and stuff, you're all together in this in this thirty by thirty room. Um, uh, am I still am I still hidden? Yes, you are still hidden. You're okay. you're still kind of crawling along the sides and stuff. And what you see is that that set of tracks that you had, you you can look and it looks like they just appeared in the very middle of the room just can i, can I look up you you, you, people. You, you 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 look up and and it's just it's just like a it's like a cube it's like a 30 by 30 by 30 cube but so the but there's room. but there's not but there's not like a skylight no no there's not like a skylight the only okay. rational expl explanation is that someone basically were teleported to this area just straight or 
they were wearing backward salt. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is possible. No, the the uh, the the combination of the working of this room plus the fact that you had a set of prints just appear, walk out of here, you follow back, you, Disco, you followed them back to their source, and it was just like right in the very center, just appeared. It didn't come from anywhere, it just appeared. So this looks like the, 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 the logical conclusion is this is the receptive point or the end point of someone that was teleported here. And now, now for, uh, familiarize me with 1E teleportation. Do I have to look for a teleportation circle? No, that's that's okay. It's, okay. Okay. What, one one difference in one e is that you can have these programmed, you know, things that you you walk into something and you teleport somewhere else. And it's like since you have permanency and since you have these ways of being able to make a teleport, we'll, we'll, we'll call it we'll call it effective to misty step with someone who is familiar with here. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. This just okay. looks like the, this, someone was teleported here. Okay. Don't know where they went. But okay. but other than that, no but, traps. But, uh, when, when did I start seeing the traps? How far back? Um, you know, maybe about maybe 30 feet back. After that, then, uh, then the dust that you would see on the ground and such, it just gets worn out. It's really fungus. There's a lot of fungus and mold and okay. crap like that on the ground. But after a while, and, you know, heavy plate metal boots, they do leave an imprint. But you can only assume that after this much time, maybe after a little while, you know, um, nature has taken over. Nature has taken this water and such as that. So now what you can see from here is that, like I said, you're in a 30 for 30. You can go south, east, north. The way back here to the east is only 10 feet and it ends in a dead wall. So the only actual exits from here are continue to the south and you can detect a little bit of a stench from that area as well, or to the west. So 30 by 30, you came in from the north. That's a dead end. You can keep going south. But but this is a dead end. end. But this is effectively uh, uh, a natural in a mine? Caverns, not really a mine. It I want to cast detect gems. Detect gems? Um, Pull up. Uh, no, no. There's a general idea of gems. Um, maybe off to your, from where you're at there, off to your northeast. But there's that's general direction. You think that there's gems off to the northeast. It, it's so. some, somewhere in there. It, it might even yeah. be through through five feet of stone. Yeah, but 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 nothing obvious. It, did I miss the tracks moving out of here? I was the only one. Yeah, that, I was the only one. That he was the only one that saw. Him. He okay. was the only one that saw. Him. Yeah, he was the only one that saw. Him. I will enter the room. <laughs> so, now that it's clear. So, so all in the room already. I was hiding. Yeah, he he, he was he not I'm very good. I'm still but hiding. He was hiding. Oh. So, all. We have all four of you now in the room, and your choice is now of exit. Do you exit to the south? Or do you exit to the west? Can west. you look at the? Can't you look at the dead end? The dead end goes twenty feet solid stone. Or is it? Okay. Hey, no one tries to explode the shit like bones. Here, here, hearing Hoder's suggestion of west with a forty-six to the west, I would like to detect for traps. No traps there. No, and um, and that thing to the west again starts moving west and south and west and south and west and south. That's the direction that it's going through. And I have a thirty-seven to hide in shadows while I'm doing that. Okay, okay. So you're continuing to do that. Uh, if you choose to move through there, then that's fine. Like I said, the stench you have again, it gets kind of smelly. Is through the passage to the south. The passage to the west is fairly clear. Um, not, you know, not, not really that bad. The and only anyone, thing and is, anyone that wants to pass me is more than welcome to. I'm just doing what I do. I'm going to pass him. I'm <laughs> going to go west because I don't want to okay. stink. Okay. So the other thing is, as you move a little bit west, you open yourself again to this, uh, say open yourself. I don't want to say that. You see in front of you 
a pathway that as you come west out of that and then you kind of move this way and this way and then it opens up to what seems to be a large i don't want to say a ring but opens up to a corridor that moves to your right and to your left and has a curvature around it and then directly in front of you about 70 feet are is a big big door it looks just like that can i i found it oh. i found it okay it's over here <laughs> i at this point I'm like, i was going to go check out the uh the the dead end but hearing the uh hodar yell, door. Oh, oh all right then so we're just splitting up now is that how the bard left like a little bitch and now everybody's wandering around Okay. okay. Hey, everybody, we're going to the big doors, and I just start clanking my way over. When, I clank my way over too quick. When, after I finally get there, I have a 19 to hear noises. You hear everybody. <laughs> no, it's absolutely, absolutely dead silence, and these doors are about, uh, about maybe 40 feet in front of you. Do you all wish to approach the doors? Well, that, that, that's what I meant by hear noises. I, th I thought hear noises was was like literally yeah. like... It, it, yeah, okay. So, no, you, you don't hear anything at all. You don't hear anything at all. One second. Let, 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 me, let me give you the description of the doors, okay? I'm going to stop 10 feet shy of those doors and sort of make like a... For disco. Okay. Let me give you the description of what you see. Is you see a pair of riveted iron valves. Each... And valves being like openings there. Each door is nine feet wide, double doors, nine feet wide, 18 feet in total, and roughly around 20 feet tall. From the look of the hinges set into the stone, each of these great doors must be at least a foot thick. On each valve are many le leering demon visages in bronze. Weird symbols form a crab tracery around the border of each iron portal. And in the center of each is a plaque that with some writing on it um, in, in some type of rooms. So, so you're 10 feet away. You can't read it from here. Well, I thought I, I, thought I was ear to ear with the door. I was talking to Dong there. Oh, oh Dong okay. My, my apologies. I, I couldn't read them even if I was like right there. Uh, I have an eighth intelligence. I'm not a big book guy. Probably not so. So... Would anyone like to approach and read? I rolled. I rolled a class? two. I will. Okay, you rolled a two. You're positive. You don't hear anything at all. No movement. No, no. I meant. Silence. I meant to. I meant to. I meant to read because I rolled the twelve to hear. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I. I didn't pick up the twelve. I'm sorry about that. You would be able to read it, Hodar. You'd be able to read it. it it's. It's actually in common. It's a little bit acrylic in the steps, but it says. Igvil's treasure rests within, her curse on all who disturb it. Seek no further to steal it, nor to free she who is prisoned here. For fate worse than death is sure to come to those fools who violate the circumscribed place. I, I turn think. to the other two and say, it says, welcome, enter and be free. <laughs> Seek friends and enter. <laughs> After you, honored guests. <laughs> is, 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 is a 37 enough to determine if it's a trapped door? Yes, that is. And there is no trap. Does there it no trap. give resistance if I attempt to open it? Um, I step back. <laughs> Why are they trying to open a closed door? Because no, we no, 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 not cursed. Good. This is a good place. I can read. <laughs> you're, no. in the, you're in the good place. Ted Danson just told you. That's right. <laughs> no, it, you, you, um, it, it does not radiate magic. Um, there are no traps. Uh, it's heavy. You just the number of stacks saying, you will die if you open the door. Yeah, but I mean, come on, it's D&D. &D. Everything says that. It's a one shot. We're gonna die anyway. I think so what I'm getting is, is 
treasure and the trapped woman. And if we rescue her, she's going to marry us and give us a faith worse than death. That is what marriage is. I, you're, 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 you're batting a thousand, Dong. I don't know, I don't know what else to say. Okay, so, so um, who has the shortest lifespan? Oh, I, I, I have 48 hit points. I have 45 hit points. So I have 42. Be- I have 42. Oh, well, I stand corrected. <laughs> I've okay. been a bachelor for 200 years. I'm not planning on making any changes. Just saying. I'm a professional bacheloress. I'm here for the treasure. That's what it says on my bumper sticker. <laughs> okay. But, but 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 no, so I didn't detect traps with a two on the door, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't give resistance. Did the no. door swing in or uh, or towards us or away from us? They they Mid Midvale Midvale School for the Gifted. All right. Um, <laughs> if nobody has a, a, an opposition to this, uh, I'm just going to open it from over there, and I take some rope and tie it around one of the. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I was literally there trying to open a door. Put it over my like shoulder what? and just start walking away, and when I get to the end of the rope, I'll start pulling. Okay. So, so about you start you start away. pulling it. It's really really heavy. Um, Mateos kind of helps a little bit there. You think it's going to take a couple of you? You feel that it would pull. I I, I, I was literally of... trying to differentiate which way the door would go because after I did, didn't detect traps, I wanted to open it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's there. There are no traps. It starts to creak open. No traps. No gas. No no it's gear. Just... Just slowly, one side, it's just slowly opening up. I'm going to hide behind that door. Okay, okay. So so there's two doors. You're hide behind one door, Disco. The other one is opening up. What you can see inside is that it's marble. Carved, beautiful, polished marble that goes on another 30 or 40 feet to a green door another 30 or 40 feet up. But the the floor is red marble. Each wall is beautiful, polished red marble. I walk in. Uh, as, as he walks in, I look at the room and go, oh, this is for sure a trap. And I collect my rope. Okay. <laughs> I walk in. I've seen the movie Behind the Green Door. I know what's there. I've yeah. seen that movie too. That's fucked up. <laughs> so, so... Give me. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm letting. I, that, I, I I'm have letting to. I, I. I have to go pee. Give me sure. two seconds. Give, oh, give me. I, give, give me. Give good. Me quick, good. I do. I do. You too. all can discuss how you wish to approach. So there's a green door, thirty feet in front of you. Red marble on all upper, lower, left, right. Let's take a quick one and a half minute break. And like I said, green door in front of you. I have to thirty feet. Okay. One second. All right. Bio break Thank across you. the board. Okay, here's what we do. We steal shit. We plant it on the other two. We let Igveld kill them, and then we're out. <laughs> I think when it says don't disturb anything, and just if we're really polite when we take it, maybe that won't uh, that won't disturb it. We're just promising the treasure a, a beautiful new home. I wouldn't feel disturbed by that offer. Nope. I say we get that old bat out of her grave and find her. Although we're still stuck underground, so it really doesn't matter. Huh? What was that? Huh? I said we kill your character and then we move <laughs> on. <laughs> Folks at home, don't forget uh, if you ever want to see it on a one shot or on our talk shows on Tuesday, go ahead and hit us up M hobo Inc, both Twitter and Gmail. Uh, two of our illustrious panel are brand new and see, they don't suck yet. Uh, although I'm the magic user. So I'll be the one screwing this one up. And, and my character definitely does just for what it's worth. That's professional courtesy. Yeah, I'll be yeah. right back. Okay.
thank you for being patient. Be sorry about the uh, sort of the technical difficulties there. So, what would the party like to do? You're still kind of generally in the same area, within 10, 15 feet of one another. Discotheque is off to one side of the door. Dong and Mateos, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna use your character names, Firkin and Zuni, Hodar, y'all are kind of back a little bit, kind of helping to pull the door open, past the door. Yes, yes, Discotech. Discotech is making its moves. You can see this red marble corridor and in front of you is a green door. Not as big. You can see that the that the overall 20 by 18 has kind of narrowed to maybe 10 feet by 10 feet. So it's kind of, you know, narrowed like this, like that, to where right. now the green door in front of you are two five feet doors. If so, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna look at disco and go. You usually check for traps. Uh, I'll do my version, and I just throw a javelin across the room towards the doors. Okay, you throw a javelin across the room. Sales did not trigger anything. I rolled a forty-seven no. to hide in shadows while he called attention to me. So, the javelin does clang quite a bit. You know, makes a good amount of noise you know, echoes throughout the different caverns and such as that. But it quiets down, no movement. You don't hear any any rush of anything and your javelin throwing did not trigger any activity. It There's, just no door trap. Trap. There's no traps that detect javelins. You're welcome. Did the door say that it was someone like Trap, not trap. Sealed behind, you? Yes, trap, trapped behind the door. Yes. So, and your, the, your the, face the, the through the next door. Yes, through, through through the next door, probably. You got one door, and then you know, you know, women. And and then and then and then hold one door. more door. Always another door. Can, always can more. Just accept our fate and leave. The room's nice. There's... Okay. Well. Okay. Well, we're trying to leave. Lead on. Oh, I th he's suggesting that we just live here now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have fun, fun guys. Just, just, you, you have fun guys to eat. I I have a nice room. I do enjoy eating fungi. I wow. think that's it. Just, just softball after softball after softball. You know, just disco. You're just that's after he's apart. done. So, is yeah. there no treasure in this uh, area here? It's Not that you can see, or you would have to see that probably behind the green doors where the treasure is. Uh, Anything? I, I go up to the green doors and investigate. I walk through <laughs> this, this grass. The green door is open, and as you approach, it. But it, it, but, it but it's not. It's not saloon door. It's a single door. No, it, two, it is two one, five footers. Yeah, it's it's two five footers, and they both open up. They both open okay. up, and, and, and let me describe the room beyond. The room beyond the door is brightly lit, strangely very brightly lit. There is a ledge right past the door, about five feet, okay? It's a decorative open work, and there's like a screen in front of that. So imagine the door opening up, and then like a ledge goes out. And you see why it's a ledge, because... It looks to be a sphere. It's a floor. It, 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 you walk in, and it's like you've walked into the center of a, of a sphere. So imagine a globe, and you just kind of like walk right in the middle of it. That, that's called the radius. Yeah, the radius. So you walk right through the middle of it, and it'll slope down, and you see a single lantern hanging in front of you. And there's this dais, this, this, sorry, uh, sorry, this ledge here. And then like a little, one of those, uh, out of character, it's like one of those like Japanese looking dressing, you know, screens or something. Uh, like fold, folding, yeah, folding. Yeah, one of those folding screens. One of those um, stands at the edge of the ledge. You can see that the other doors, there, are, there were other doors as well, open onto ledges like the one which you stand. Each has its own screen. There look to be seven other ledges. Um, the chamber's spherical. And 
and the ledges are asymmetrically or asymmetrically arranged along the equator of the sphere. The upper hemisphere forms a dome of lapis lazuli, as dark as the night sky at the top, as the pale as the twilight horizon at the equator. The local hemisphere on the bottom part is made of serpentine, pale green at the equator, deep green at the bottom of the bowl. So green at the bottom, dark on the top and the sides of the sphere are perfectly smooth and they look like they can't be climbed or walked on at all unfortunately for the thief your screen is carved from a rare wood and inlaid with ivory and mother of pearl it actually looks quite valuable through the opening its intricate carvings you see a jeweled lanthorn on a golden chain hanging from the center of the dome within the lanthorn is a steady amber flame its light is magnified by crystal lenses set in the framework of the lanthorn. A warm and comforting light from this lanthorn makes you feel quite special inside. The lanthorn high, high hangs above a broad stone dais. Atop the dais is a block of rose-colored marble, six feet long, three feet wide, and high. On the dais surrounding the marble are small carpets and lots of beautifully fashioned stands, rare porcelain vessels full of gems that's where your detect gems must have been okay the, I, I was thinking the, the lapis but okay and i mean these are bowls full of gems okay right and atop the marble block is a slab of white alabaster inlaid with golden sigils moons and stars and strange symbols and a woman sleeps on top of the alabaster slab the sleeping maiden is armed, is armed from toe to neck in gold chased plate mail, and a long bastard sword is atop her body. Its quillions are right below her breasts, its point near her feet, and the woman's gauntlet hands are covered crossed over the sword's pommel. Her pale face seems composed. Her lips are bright red, and raven haired trusses are very lustrous she's a beautiful beautiful woman a helmet with plumes as black as the maid's hair rests on the slab just above her head and if you wish to investigate further you you have to get on the edge of the uh of the of the slab right now you're viewing this you know from a couple of feet away um i would like to know all of your distance and where you're at right now i, I was going to say i'd like to know her ac because i'd like to fire my composite torpedo of speed all right, so this this is kind of the image of what you see. Okay. What's her AC? What? Because because I I'm 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 seriously just from from my perch, I'm composite composite short bow of speed. I go first, no matter what. Right, that's true. You're that's gonna true. shoot her. She's she's laying down. I You're mean, about was threatening to marry one of us, <laughs> and we can't we, can, we can't be having that. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> minus three. Minus three. Okay. As Disco knocks the arrow, I just lean over to, towards Zini and go. She really doesn't like any competition in the dungeon. No, you know I like to be getting on my so so minus three. Where Scott? So, disco um, for missile for missile combat. Yeah, it's going to be modified enemy armor class of minus three. Mo modified minus three. Okay. Right, and she is a monster with armor. Why are we attacking her? So, what's her armor? Negative three, base armor class of zero. You need a nineteen to Negative hit her. Three. God damn. Okay. Well, you messed that formula up, but I only had an 11, so I miss. I asked, does, are, we, are we killing this bitch? She does not stir at all. Okay. Because I have an item fire. that will resolve this. Because <laughs> this, this says all I need is a 15, Scott. Um, for missile combat? If I do base enemy minus three, modify minus two. No, no, no. The base I guess. enemy is zero. Base enemy is zero. Modified enemy is minus three. Gotcha. Okie dokie. It still says 15. You rolled an hit, 11, didn't hit, you? Uh, <laughs> hit, uh, hit F9. 
Uh, okay, but it automatically is updating. So, okay, now oh, it, it says is? 19. Now it says 19. Okay, never mind. Okay. No. I, I, I have a few other things that are, anyway, so, so long story short, it, it's, she's going to be tough to hit with a, with a, oh, yeah, with long a story short, I will. Yeah. Cool. Got yeah, it. yeah. Long story short. She doesn't, she doesn't, you know, stir at all. Um, the door is open. You took a shot at her. Um, and, um, what would you all like to do in general do, terms? Do, do we, do we need to initiative? Right now, she's still asleep. You know, maybe you could talk with her. You know, she. It's, or, or you could just or, close or, the door. Or, or maybe I could fire off as many arrows as I possibly can until I hit her. Everything is still all right behind us. <laughs> okay, so she rests, and um, this uh, Dom, what would uh, what would you like to do? So Firkin, um, I'm going Firkin, to sorry. What would Firkin like to do? I apologize. Go cross to the doors, take in the room. So this is the woman threatening to marry and kill us, and we're not supposed to disturb her or disturb the treasure. Shooting arrows is definitely disturbing. Um, hey, lady, lady, lady. She shakes her head a little bit. It's and right. starts. Oh, n n now we're not disturbing her. <laughs> well, it just called out to her and said, "said lady, she she smiles at you, Firkin, and says, my hero." Oh my God! Oh, it's no, Blanche no, Devereaux. It. Oh my God! <laughs> fuck it, fuck it. Kill, 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 Rue McClanahan. <laughs> Go forward, my ladies, man. My hero. My yeah, let, let's 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 all roll initiative. I got a four plus three. Is that seven? It's one dice or two. Roll a d six. I, I I rolled a four, but I get a plus three to initiative. Is that seven? Uh, it, it, it's a four unless she ties. Oh, okay, is, okay, okay. Yeah, no, you guys are gonna go first. She, she did not roll that well. Um, that's fine. Your distance is. Where is fighting? Okay, so you're all about 30 feet away, still in the red marble corridor, as, looking as, at her. As she says, my hero, I go, no, 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 no. This, to be clear, I am not rescuing you or disturbing you. I'm just saying hello. Why are you sleeping in the middle of Cerebro? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she and she just says to you um well you. well well my dear Ferkin, i my mother imprisoned me here i i so 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 she knows his name she really, knows his name really really love for you and i to get to know each other better why don't you why don't you why don't you come here I'm gonna light up Firkin squeeze. <laughs> I was gonna say he knows she knows his name. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. She 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 knows his name. Um Did you know each other? She 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 just knows his name. Uh, you know, I I I mean she, she just does. Um disco, you fired an arrow. Let's let's you guys have first but, initiative. But that but that was yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that yeah. Whatever. You all have first initiative, but but I wanted to make sure I'm not sure Fear can had a chance to say yeah. to say what he wanted to say. Yeah, no, that's so let's that's all fair. let's all declare our intentions as to what we would like to do. You're still outside. Well, 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 while she's speaking to him, can I apply a poison? Yes, you may. You you can apply a poison. You can apply a poison. Hodar, what would you like to do? Lighten this bitch up because there's no way she should know Firkin. I'm gonna do fireball. You're gonna do fireball, Zini. What would what would your cleric like to do other than pray? Cast but what would you sanctuary? like to do? Cast sanctuary. Okay, Zini. Sanctuary. Based on the math, Hodar, your fireball should perfectly fill this room. Yep. Hodar <laughs> is doing fireball. I'm. I. And, Dom, and I, I, you I, were I, you, you you were talking to her. And you are engaging into a conversation with her. She wants you to. She wants you to come here and for you to get to know each other better. But other than 
A fireball coming. Are there others who just saying no? What would you like to do? Uh, I start back. I back up to the door and put my face behind my shield. Okay. Discuss. They can't steal your soul if you don't look them in the eyes. It's what's it's my mother a, told it's me. A, it's called a camera. <laughs> Disco, what would you like to do? Well, while I'm applying my poison, can I hide in shadows? For for a uh, because you know you know I'm going to try and you know I'm going to try and take her from behind. Well, the problem is is that the room that she's in, it's too brightly lit. There are no shadows, and you're going to have to find a way. Remember, this is a sphere. But, but she, is here. she is she on a lower level? She's on a I, ledge, a dais. She, yeah. So so imagine that you're in Cerebro. Cerebro was a great, great okay, thing, right? Can, and then at I the not, bottom can, of it... Can I, can I not, like, hop down and hide behind the dais? You're going to you, slide you can your try. ass down you, the... You can the, try. The, you would have to slide down, and you would end up at the bottom of the dais. Okay? okay. And then you can try to find a way to hide behind, you know, something... So, so, two, so two dex checks, basically... Didn't well, just I, 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 there? I, I just want to know. I just want to know what your intentions are, because then my, I have my intent. My intentions are always to try and get them from behind. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> always your intentions. Okay. So the best way of doing that, seeing how it's going to happen, you're going to have to try understanding what Hodar is going to need to do. You're going to need to wait for his fireball spell to go off, unless you want to be in the room when the fireball spell goes off. If not, what you need to do is you're going to have to. After the fireball spell goes off, and check me if I'm got we'll, this. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll say that's while I'm while I'm doing my poison. Right. So while you're doing the poison, Hodar is doing his fireball spell. You'll move forward, try to slide down and right. hide okay. behind one of the alabaster columns, columns that has that that's full of gems because of these big okay. vests such as that. Okay. Uh, do, 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 I, do I do I have a minus? Do I have a minus because I want all of those gems? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a straight thing. but I'm going to aim at your ass if you don't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay, Hodar, let's... Um, ma, ma, um, Zinni's... Uh, one second. Zinni, you're, you're under sanctuary successfully. Um, Dong is going to be trying to back away. And I assume preparing, preparing your some type of weapon, preparing some type of thing. So you're at the edge. You're not a hundred percent. I'm going to try out my new broadsword. Okay, Hodar is um, Hodar is firing fireball. So yes, let's go ahead and um, let's see what is her thing here. Da, 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 da. Okay, and. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, um, spell. Okay, so she made her save, but you can go ahead and roll that, and she takes half damage. Not too many murder hobos. For those of you at home, Murder Hobo is six. Uh, 12, 22, 26, uh, 32, 34, 35. Halved is Seven, 17. Uh, 17. Rounding down. Okay. She, Boom! She, <laughs> the, your, your explosion of a fireball bursts into a burst into flame um and uh right at that moment you see her her uh, her sword flies up in the air she actually that that sword she throws it and it starts dancing in of itself and runs straight to the cleric straight to you Jenny. It, 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 you are welcome, Zinni. It, it, <laughs> it seems to have a mind of its own, believe it or not. I, I, I hates clerics. I, I, I heard him say dancing sword. 
so so it's uh it's it's running there as as fast as possible she um jumps off and hisses at you and sure enough two big bright shining fangs just comes she needs right an orthodontist through. she she <laughs> might need an orthodontist to uh to affix those fangs um but, and, but while um, her, but while her attention is affixated does that make my sneak easier I'll give you an extra ten percent. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's a try to uh, let's a try to roll that. I rolled a straight forty. Straight forty. For. I was trying to hide so that I could backstab her. Okay, you're able to hide shadows. Yeah. And you're able to get there. That's okay. But you're able to get down to the bottom. She's. 10 feet above you. You're able to hide silently. She's, she's, she's out of your reach, right? So this is, this is 60 feet. You're able she, to she, she's, she's on, she's on the dais, right? She's on the dais 20 feet above you. So, so you can't attack her this round, right? She's still about 15 feet above you. You're going to, you now, can now what, about short, what about the short bow? Short bow you can, but you can do it next turn. It takes too long for you to move all yeah, that. Yeah. Cause it's in time to, to try and reload. But I'd, I'd rather I'd rather try and is it does the dais look climbable? The dais does look climbable. Yes, the dais does look climbable. Okay. Absolutely, actually, the dais look climbable. It is it is her turn, and um, just just to be clear, uh, I Firkin should be between the sword and Zini. Yep, that's true. So, uh, well, doesn't the sanctuary do anything? Yeah, oh, sanctuary, sanctuary means she yeah. can't really hit you. No, I, absolutely. It, it 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 will it will protect you. Sanctuary will 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 help absolutely. The, and let's give a firsty explanation of sanctuary. When the cleric class a sanctuary spell, any opponent must make a saving throw versus magic in order to strike or otherwise attack him. If the saving throw is not made, the creature will attack another and totally ignore the cleric protected by the spell. So the sword wants to attack you, but it has to make a save. Does it apply to swords? swords? It counts yes. as an opponent. It, it, yeah, it does, it, it it does, does count, count as, as an a, opponent. As a, as a sentient opponent because it's a sentient and weapon. I, I will need you all to save versus magic. I'm hiding. Yeah. So not not disco, but Firkin, Zini, and save Hodar versus say magic. versus magic. So on versus your spreadsheet Bell or Rod Staff One. Um should be spell. spells. I'm good with a sixteen. What save versus magic? So so on so your nice. saving throws there, uh, probably it should be around like cell F twenty five uh, on your spreadsheet. Uh save throw. There is a safe neutral here. There uh, is no. Should be on your master character sheet. So, yeah, so but there's so nothing besides. Roll that. me, uh, roll me a, roll me a d twenty. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Um, Hodar, you rolled what? Sixteen. And what is your save versus spell? Uh, 10. I'm a mage, baby. Okay. Farrakhan, what did you roll? I got a 14. And my save, my save is 13. Okay. But her charm is at a minus two. So you rolled an 11. You are in love with her. In love. You now, think now, this... now, now, what, now, what do I have to roll to pull out my tits? <laughs> Matt twenty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm Firkin. You, you are, you are charmed by her, by her, um, by her. This ample shadows right now, anyway. So. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So they, they, you, they, uh, they, they, they'd be hidden. <laughs> you, you, you lower your, your, uh, your, um, um, hammer and begin to, and begin to walk towards her. And he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't have he doesn't have the hammer. He has the sword. 
Oh, okay, okay. You, you, you have the sword. If you put the hammer up, then yes, you have the sword. And you begin to walk towards the dais. And uh, um, she, she's quite, quite happy as she beckons you closer. Um, you're, you're under, under the effect of her charm. The, hey, um, look, I, I know there's a bunch of red flags and you seem like honestly a terrible person, but there's something about you that's just it's a glint yeah, in your yeah, eye it's, or it's, 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 her, her, it, it's, it's her cunt. It, it's her cunt. It's that, apparently. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so she needs someone, to someone has to say cunt on the internet. <laughs> versus that right there. And your sanctuary spell, it's good, but it's not good enough against her. And I'm, I, I, I do apologize for that, but uh, she's going to get that, that sword's going to jump up and is going to take a couple, it's, it's going to take a couple of attacks against you, um, the, um, Mr. Zini. So, she, what is your armor she class? She charmed me, but the sword didn't. Can I still act? The, 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 sword, the sword already went against the cleric. She's going yes. directly after you. It's a dancing sword. Right, right but I, I, I had said that I'm between, like, I'm between the sword and Zini. So, does me being charmed, I just walked towards her and ignored the sword? Right, you ignored the okay. sword. Okay. Yeah. The, like, the, the sword, sword is flying, flying like... The sword is flying through the air. Uh, aiming straight, aiming straight for you. Now I gotta, I, my eyes. I gotta, I gotta see my eyes here real quick. Your AC is one, right? I have no idea. Okay. Two. AC is armor class. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so your hit once. You'll need to take. Um, that is that's 14 and another one four misses you but I need you to make a save versus paralyzation that's uh, so yeah so when you're struck by this I need you to it, it's not you, you have a pretty good chance to roll me another d20 please Fifteen. What? Fifteen. Fifteen. You feel a wave of paralyzation go through your body, but you're able to shake it off. But the sword is dangling right in front of you, and it gets two attacks per round at you. While Does it grab it? it? It's going to be right out of your range. You can try to grab it if you want to, but it may chop your hand off. It really, really wants to. Oh, it really wants to smite you down. That's the second round. That was first round. Now we're in the second round here. She has flown up to the top of the ceiling and is inverted upside down. How high is the ceiling from where I was trying to be? Because I thought we beat her in initiative. You did, but she still had a chance to move during her turn. Okay. So how and far just, is the ceiling? It's 60 feet up. Okay. And... This room is not scalable. No, it's sheer. It's a it's a sheer surface. Okay. There's nothing okay. to climb. However, she's not paying any attention to you, and she does not see you. Okay, she does not see you. So 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 you know you have you do have that going for you. She's taken the she's taken the fireball so far, and she's charmed Firkin, who's moving towards her slowly. Hodar is still kind of in the back and will start the next round of combat with it, declaring our intentions. Hodar, what would you like to do? I'm going to use my wand of lightning on her ass. Okay, Hodar is going to do wand of lightning. Can I cast, is that a curse? Can I cast remove curse? The charm thing? You can. Yeah, yeah, that maybe maybe remove curse um, if you're successful in it and she fails, then that will give I'll give Firkin a, a bonus to try to break the charm. That's how I'll rule on that. Okay, is that fair to try to assist yeah. Firkin from breaking? Okay, Firkin, you right now are in love with with this lady. 
Okay. And, and all you can do is trying to find a way to hug her because you think she needs a hug. I'm, I'm calling out to her like, baby, darling, sweetie pie, you're flying away from me. I can't love you when you're up there in the sky. I don't have wings. Come down to me, darling. Disco, what would you, what would your intentions for this? Uh, uh, what are you going to try to do? Sorry, sorry. For, for first edition question, if I go up and pimp slap him, is it going to break the charm? He'll get a chance to, yeah. That's probably what I'm going to try and do. Like, okay. like not, not non-lethal, like try and do just one damage. It's subdual non-lethal damage, right? Yeah. So whenever someone takes any type of damage, whether it's lethal or non-lethal, they have a chance to, to, to break out of the charm. Yes. That's okay. that. So, I, so I normally so ruled like that. Since, since, cause he's already down on the dais, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So since he's there, I'm going to scale the dais and try and break his charm. Okay. So Disco is going to try to break charm. And because uh, and I know there's not a, a a sneaky way of doing that, but I think he's more useful as on, on our team than on her team. Fair enough. Um, well, I think Hodar just okay. Hodar, you're back. You're doing Wand of Lightning. Let's go ahead and start with you. She'll get a save versus Wands, I believe. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the, uh, I have two charges left on the 6d6, but she does get a save using that one. All right, versus Rod Stafford Wand. Okay. What's the length of the lightning bolt? Because if I remember my first dad, that shit bounces. Sure that's does. <laughs> okay. and, 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 and if that's the case, then I don't want to move. Okay, so, so you hit her um and she's gonna take some damage go ahead she's gonna take half damage she was able to make her safe man yeah, not that good today A 20 so 10 damage okay okay and your remove curse then goes off Birkin. Give me a save versus spell. Okay. What'd you roll? What? 10. 10. So that is not going to be good enough. Sorry. Even, even, with, uh, even with a plus two but, bonus. But, I'm but that means it's going to hit him, advantage. right? No, no, no. It, it was the, this was a remove curse to try to break Firkin's charm. Well, what what about Wizard of Ed's lightning bolt? She's flying. You know, yeah, it, it's it's it it totally absorbed her. It, oh, oh it okay, not, okay, yeah, okay. It, it, Sorry. It, it, Sorry. it did not go anywhere else. No, no, no. It crackled around her, but she was able to to touch part of the wall, and then the rest of the energy. She she, she grounded herself. Yeah, basically, she was able to ground herself. Took okay. some damage, but it 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 did dissipate the charge. Okay. okay. Summon creature for those phases. So, so yeah, it, it, that's that's I know, right? So, Fearkin, you are still charmed, although you're you kind of questioned a little bit there, and then now you're kind of looking at Zinni's. Uh, sorry, actually, you're looking at Hodar, saying, "You just tried to hurt my woman." But but, but no, now now it is my turn, though. Correct? Now, right now it is. I'm just telling you what what Fearkin. Okay. 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 Because yeah, now, now now I am gonna go. I'm not going to pimp slap him because I don't want him because I have rings. I don't want him to do three damage. I'm just going to pitch slap him. Okay. So why don't you roll me a uh, why don't you roll me a d10, please? A d10. A d10. Where the, where the fuck is okay? There's that. Four. Four. So I want you to add four to this roll, Fierkin, because now you've had two attempts. To try to break you out of this curse, trying to break you out of this charm. Maybe we just you're rolling like lower the and lower and lower. The know, you're like progressively it. rolling, rolling lower. Now you can. Can, can are, I? Can I? Can I sneak back into shadows at all? You can try. I'll, I'll give you a chance to go back into shadows. Sure. Okay. Hey, both because, in love. Uh, I rolled a thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. I 
think that'll get you back into shadows. You were able to disappear amongst the uh, amongst the uh, vessels and urns. But do I uh, roll damage? No, no, you don't roll damage. It's not enough to roll damage. Okay. Ferrican, you are this lady's chosen champion. You are her defender. You will defend her and love her to the day that you die. You're absolutely 100%. She's the greatest thing that ever happened hey, to hey, you. Hey, hey, Scott, just, just yeah. for... This reminds me a little like Vampire the Masquerade, like with charisma and all that. Like, can I, like, seduce him? You, you, I, I'll give you a chance at trying to do that, but, but you may n upset. Next, the, next the, round, that's fine, but, but yeah, I'm just Next kinda... round. Next round, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, try that. So, um, let me see here. She will run along those walls and um, comes right up to you, Firkin, gives you a small kiss on the cheek, and then runs over to Hodar and slashes you with her claws and then tries to bite you, Hodar. Oh, are, are we? How, how, how is she running along these walls that I'm not able to scale? Like she's she's wearing no 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 she's wearing some slippers that give her amazing okay grip. okay just 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 out of curiosity because if I can't do that I don't I want to know why someone else can't no so, no yeah you you actually yeah, do, slippers, you so. actually do see a little bit of crackle of magical energy from the slippers that she's wearing okay. as she's running okay. along the walls she can just like run along like like uh, she was ginger it, but, but that was a fair school. question right no no absolutely. I mean, okay. um, uh, out of character, she's wearing slippers of slider of spider okay. climb, okay. which allow so, her to do precisely are, that. Are you using the the um, uh, advanced D&D term? He, 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 he's doing time? everything up until, uh, what was the book you held up, Scott? So I'm just- Everything up until, up, in, up until Unearthed Arcana. Okay, because the, the first edition term person, I don't get another saving throw until next month. Yeah, I'm modifying that slightly, right? Okay. So I, I am house ruling it a little bit that whenever someone Thank smacks you and slaps you around, Thank the vampiric, God. Charm, okay. the vampiric charm is a little bit different because yes, technically you are her thrall forever, but you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, not gonna play, I'm not going to play it that hard. But uh, but what's going to happen this round during her turn is. Um, a continued, she's able to attack you, Zinni, and that, that sword that's in front of you hits twice. Give me, um, well, plus take another 20 hit points of damage, please, Zinni. I'm taking what? 20 hit points of damage. I... Okay, what do and I do? you and and um, you you took eighteen last sorry you took fourteen last time another twenty so you've taken thirty four hit points of damage and you're paralyzed. Quick question, Scott. Use item on another person. Yeah. What is that? That's it. It, it kind of depends. It, it's basically a it's basically an action of some type. Okay. But um, but but so so I'm I'm gonna explain what happened to Zinni here real quick. So Zinni, the the bastard sword in front of you slashed twice, hit you both times. Okay, you took an additional twenty hit points of damage, so it got you twice, and this time that wave of paralyzation stuck. So you find yourself stuck in place. Okay, and and you're gonna have to wait till next turn to see if we can break out of this paralyzing effect from this sword that's just an awful, awful, awful sword. That's why they call it a bastard. Well, it's, it's, it's partly penetrating. It has an ego, and it, it, it's talking to you, and it's mocking your God right now. It is literally mocking your God, saying, 
why were you ever even put on this earth? Why were you even put on this planet? I am going to so end you. I'm going to plunge myself into your heart and suck out every bit of life. I mean, it's that. I like, I like the plunging and the sucking part of that. It, it's, it's very much against clerics. The purpose of this sword, you feel the very reason this sword was put on this planet was to attack you and to do harm to you. And, and it's, it's very, it's very unsettling. I, very, so very unsettling. Because you are quite special with this. Now, Frank, um, Drelzen is right up in your face right now after having run full on and uh, slashes you twice with her claws and tries to bite you. Okay? Yeah. So, so quick, quick question, Scott. Like, so she's come down from the ceiling. Yes. So well, how, she's, how far, she's how, far am, how far am I from her? She's, she ran down from the ceiling, gave a quick kiss on the cheek to Firkin, and then came up to Hodar, who was right at the very opening of the door, firing off spells and casting his, and using his wand, got right up in front, slashed her twice, okay. missed one time, and then bit him on the neck. Okay? So am I... Climb, You're climb up on up. the dais, right? You're I, up I'm on a, the dais. I'm, a, I'm, here. I'm, I'm, I'm hidden. I'm hidden again because we determined right. I was hidden again. But am I attackable hidden or am I shootable hidden? You probably, are probably shootable only, hidden. Sh probably only shootable hidden. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's still about 30 feet away. Okay. Thank you. This, the extra point. Right, right, exactly. Okay. Okay, so what is her damage? D6 plus four. One, two, three. Okay, you take 16 hit points of damage, Hodar. Got it. Give me a spell, uh, a save versus spell, please, twice. Uh, first one's an 18 on the die. Uh, second one is a 16 on the die. Uh, okay. Versus spell is versus 10. spell. Okay, so. so you do not lose two levels. Bonus round. <laughs> now we're in the round three. That was her attack. We I didn't have... actually act that round yet. Okay, so go ahead and act. What would you like to do? So since I was only hidden for short bow distance, but I only attacked once last round, or I didn't attack at all. I just hid. So can I get two attacks off with a short bow? You can do two attacks with a short bow. All right, I rolled a nine and a 19. Okay, the 19 will hit. Okay, and then I rolled a five. Five, but, so but, five. But, I, but, I, but I'm using plus two arrows. Okay, so that's plus seven on your damage. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, good. Good. God damn. So okay. is, that, is, is that five plus seven equals 13? Your your dex bonus gives you plus plus three. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, then right, so you, you, you messed up the it's, equation, I'm sorry, up the it's, equation on that again. I may have. It's plus three damage, plus three attack for dex, because one E uses your Cause, dexterity. Because my, my, my dex is 18. Correct. Your dex is 18. So you get plus three on your damage, plus three to hit. And uh, so you miss with one, you hit with another, you're plus two arrows, and it's a plus two short bow. So that's why I said it's plus seven total. It's, it's, it's not a plus. It's not a plus two short bow. It's just a short bow of attack speed. I thought it's a plus two. No, no. I I, I just bow. get to go for. I just get to go first if that's what I want to do. Okay, my fault. Then uh, then you roll the five. It's five. It's plus five. Then. Okay. okay so, so ten damage. Ten. Ten damage. Okay. Okay. Ten damage. You're able to do. Um, she notices you now. Um, okay, but oh, but oh, but 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 I was hit. But I was hidden. Triple damage. Yep. So thirty. Okay. Sure, sure. I'll give you thirty. Sure, that's okay. I Just forgot about that part. Absolutely, that that's fine. Now it's that was um, that was and, yeah, and 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 I'm perfectly fine with not getting a chance to hide again because okay, that, that feels can... like that was that feels like that was 
kind of a super yeah, duper. So it, it's such, they're, they're very aware. Zinni, you're paralyzed. Hodar, what would you like to do? Wall of Ice, dropping it on her head. Wall of I'm Ice, dropping the ice it on her sheet. head. Okay, yep. the ice sheet. Are you anchoring it to anywhere? Or are you just allowing it to drop down on her? The casting of this spell causes a horizontal sheet to fall upon opponents. The sheet covers a 10-foot square area per caster level, so 90 feet. Uh, the sheet has the same effect as the Ice Storm Hailstones, 3d10 hit points inflicted to creatures beneath it. Very good. 3d10. You'll get a save versus spell. Fearkin. Also beneath it. That's right. It's also going to get Fearkin as well. And Discotech. Eh, shouldn't have loved her. <laughs> so, Zinni, you're actually a little bit out of the way because you're next to Hodar, so you're not going to feel the effect of this. Um, Am I not behind the door, not even inside the room? You're, you're on the ledge, in essence. You have to be at least on the ledge. Okay, right. so... Well, okay, you can be back, but it doesn't matter. The, the sword's going to follow you. Wherever you want to be, that oh, sword yeah. is right next to you. Okay? My, my, uh, so, yeah. sorry, sorry, I had to potty. I was kind of hiding behind the dais, so do I have partial cover from the dais? You have a little bit of cover. I'll, I'll, I will give you a, say, plus two um, versus, versus spell. Um, Fearkin, you're in love. I'll still give you a save um, plus two for spell. Um, for being and then, oh, and then uh, Zinni, you're not in the area of effect. Um, she she made her save. Um, so roll it is 3d10 for your damage, correct? Yep. All right. I rolled a 17 plus two, so 20, 19. What are you doing? I'm rolling the fucking ice wall. <laughs> right, but he said hey, I got a plus two to save. Yeah, he, he, he still gets a save versus spell. Uh, 19 plus 5, 24. Half is 12. Cool. 12. 12 damage. Um, Discotech, did, did, uh, you make your, did you make your save? I, I, rolled, a, I rolled a... I rolled a... I rolled a... What was it? 17 plus 2. You did. You will still take twelve hit points of damage for no, 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 it's it, storm. yeah, half, yeah, half, yeah, half. Fearkin, uh, give me a save uh, versus spell 20, 22. Okay, so you're able to make twenty. Your... And give me a plus two, so I got a twenty-two. Yeah, you got a twenty-two. That's good. So you only take twelve hit points of damage as well. Okay. So Zinni, you're paralyzed. Um, Fearkin, you're charmed. Uh, Hodar, you that was what you throw off. Uh, now, it's it's Discotech's turn. Now, now, now yeah. you did say that this this asshole wizard that I've been traveling with is, keeps attacking my girlfriend. Yes, and I'm going to give you one more save. Okay, one more save because you just took damage to break the charm that you in that you're in. So let's. Let's roll to see. But you said it was plus two each time, so is it now plus four? No, because nope, I because nope, I pimp because nope. I pimp slapped him. No, nope. what'd you roll, Fearkin? Four. Four. If you oh, wish to attack, if you wish to attack, then your target is going to have to be Hodar. So you're you're uh, and, 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 and I mean you. Your, your, your lover looks at you and implores you along, please defend me. That really was so cold. It's, I'm gonna kick your ass, Hodar. It's really cold and wet and icy down here, so it's gonna take me a while to climb there. But boy, howdy, when I get up there, you're gonna get a, such a... Remember this nice sword? Well, I'm giving it an introduction to your ass, buddy. <laughs> it's as cold as your girlfriend's ass <laughs> as cold it's as so, ice willing so, to is, sacrifice uh, our love this oh. is your turn what would you like to do so uh, <laughs> for, forgive me did we say i successfully hit again or am am i now in full you're in full view all right hodar dropped a wall of ice Okay, Zinni, unfortunately, and, and, is still paralyzed. Okay, so Fearkin so so is, so, is so now I didn't attack the first round. I have three attacks per two round. 
I attacked twice last round. What does that mean? Can I attack you twice? Have, you have one attack this round. Even though I didn't use a single attack the first round. No, you, you, th there is no cumulative no action rollover. like that in one. Yeah. Oh, there, okay. 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 Yeah, so. So no, I guess I guess my best bet is to try and sneak into shadows again, so that I can get another backstab. Okay. okay. So, but give but me, can, uh, I, can, I, can I do all of that this turn? You can you can move, try to hide in shadows, and and yes, attack. If those are your intentions, you just have to have the dice support you. Thirty-seven. Okay, that's good enough to hide in shadows. Do I get an? Uh, an, an attack advantage while I'm hidden. You get a plus four to attack if... if, if oh, well then, if shit. You... I should have had another one hit. Because I rolled a 16. So plus four is dirty 20. Dirty 20, that's, that, that is going to hit her. Because I'm doing my bow. Right, so... so... That's a two plus... Plus five. Two plus five, so seven times three is 21. Correct. And now I can't sneak back into shadows though because that's the end of my turn, correct? Correct, correct. And we're doing so, a little so, bit so, of- um... so, so, so now I've, now I've basically bulls died her while exposing myself. Yes, yeah, so, so, okay. so, so you're not in shadows anymore. It is now her turn, and she jumps on you directly. Okay. Um, and um, I call for a saving throw. She's cheating on me already. <laughs> and I whip my tits out as a reaction. Yes, yes, yes. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> um. So she's going to swipe at you twice with her claws and try to bite you there, Disco. Oh, all, 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 all three, all three attacks. Yes, all but, three but I do, I do have a negative four armor class, correct? I don't think it's negative four because my dexterity is eighteen. Yeah, I know. I've already included it. But but I think I have a negative... The spreadsheet you sent me says I have a negative four armor class. It's not negative four. Hold on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I'm going to see what you have. I, I have you as an armor class of zero. You have a base armor class. You have plus three studded letter plus um, at 18. You get a plus six over studded leather. Studded, studded leather... Uh, has a base armor class of of uh, six, so you should basically have an armor class of zero. Is is what your armor class should be? Okay. For some reason, it says negative four on the spreadsheet. That's why I asked for enough. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely I understand. I the, the my my spreadsheet can have can can absolutely have some issues. Okay. So, um, but but even with a dexterity eighteen, I still have zero armor class with armor. Yep. yep. That is that is that is what it is. Yeah, that's it's, rough. And it is rough. What's worse than rough is all she needs is a three to hit you. Which is why I'm saying that doesn't sound correct. Yeah, welcome to first edition. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know, but that really doesn't sound like legitimately. That doesn't sound correct. Okay, so it is. So she has to, to hit armor class zero. She's a thirteenth level fighter. Uh, oh, okay, so. Let's back up. Why is my arm class zero? Okay, so zero. I, I'm actually giving you giving you a member. It's member. We're counting back. So you start at seven. Okay. Oh, okay. Base of seven. Okay. Base of seven. Okay. Let's move three down because it's plus three. So you move from seven. Well, it shouldn't be plus six. three. It's it should be plus four. No, it's it, plus it, three. It, 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 at eighteen. No, plus three studded leather armor. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, plus three studded leather armor. So you start off at seven, and you go seven, six, five, four. 
Okay. Th that's 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 the four. Right. Then you come down for your dexterity, okay? And that gives you another three, okay? So now you're at four, and then three, four, three, two, one, okay? And then she's having to charge and move at you at the same time, and I'm giving you a bonus of one because you have partial cover, okay? So okay. that moves your armor class from one to zero. So zero, th th okay. th this, is, th this is a good example of how, of how it works. So you have an armor I mean, well, class. No, and, and, I, and I wasn't trying to be like, Contentious. I was just no, trying. No, no, no. I, I, I understand. Let's it's a thirteenth level yeah. fighter. I'm not a fighter. I'm, a, I'm not a fighter. I'm a thief. She is. Oh, okay. She's the thirteenth level fighter hitting a uh, hitting a, a someone with an armor class of zero and a base armor class of zero. So, uh, sorry, not yet. Yeah, yeah, a total armor class of zero equals a an eight to hit, and that's a base. That's just general to hit. She gets plus four due to so twelve due to her things. So four. Then, know that. No. Remember, we, where it goes down, minus one. it takes right. So we go from four an eight plus, plus four to plus three. So we start with an eight to hit you, and she has a total bonuses to her of four. So that goes from an eight to a four. So she needs a four on a twenty sided dice to hit you. That makes a lot more sense than what you said previously. Okay. So I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't break it down. So it needs a four or greater. And she rolled a four, a 10, and a two. So she does not hit you with her teeth. She gets you twice with her claws. So I need you to, I need you to make two saves. Against, of. Uh, of, I need you to make two saves versus... Versus paralyzation. Okay, that's paralyzation. The, and yeah, I paralyzation. have, uh, do, 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 that's a 12 or higher. Okay. And I rolled an 18 and in 18. 18 and 18. So you don't lose two levels. But I take how much damage? Eight plus. Eight. Eight plus eight is sixteen. So minus sixteen. What does it take for me to do my potion? P pardon for you to what? What does it take to do a potion? That that's just a normal action. It, so instead of instead of your um instead so, of so 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 because I have but because I only have one attack coming up. Can I do it's, it's that part is the same is that you know you can either attack or 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 okay. do a potion. Hey, yeah, hey, just that, you that can miss all the is. shots you don't take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear you. Um, Zuni, you're paralyzed. That that sword is in front of you, dangling over you. And uh, but since you're paralyzed, um, it decides to very slowly linger on top of you, very slowly, and then just hover itself right above the nape of your neck, just, just, just right there. And then slowly, slowly plunge itself down. So you will take. For those of you at home, Google Damocles. Six, six, twelve. It's the worst possible way of getting teabagged. So that's going to be another another 18 hit points of damage, but I'm going to give you another save versus paralyzation to break out of it. That was such a strong attack on you that you know you're going to see if you can't break out of that break out of that paralyzation. Give me a save versus paralyzation, please. <laughs> it's a trick. I'm trying, man. I'm really trying to Ouch. get you back in. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to get you back in the fight. I really am. Um, I just accept my fate. I said I'll leave here, and I think Furkin has found a girlfriend. I found a sword, and Disco found the eyes. <laughs> Disco will fuck anything. <laughs> it's a fine house. We're just living here forever, and that's now. It. That's good. That's good. Furkin. <laughs> So um, at this point, you're, you're, you're looking at what you should do. Um, 
you're on a dais with with uh, you know, discotech is kind of coming in and coming out. You can't really see him. He's still kind of hidden. And then her, he appeared. Her, he, he, her. her. She 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 took a shot and she got she she, she got your girlfriend in the back there. And uh, um, you know you're not really understanding what to do because you're really mad at Hodar for doing all those spells and everything else like that. It's now your turn. Okay. And you are. Your your compulsion, your strong strong compulsion, is that you have got to do something to protect your so woman here. I my hammer's hanging from my belt. I'm gonna sheath this new sword. Um, grab one of my javelins and go. Hey hey, hold on hold on. I feel better, buddy. Everything's shoo. <laughs> everything's just shoo. <laughs> okay, Disco. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to. Again, because that's I, I'm the thief. It's what I do. I would like to try and sneak back into shadows somehow, so that I might have another <laughs> chance to actually. Actually, can I can I pimp slap Firkin twice? Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> then no, I'm not going to slink back into shadows. I'm going to run up and do the and do the whap and then the whap. Okay. Give me, uh, give me, give me two d20s. A uh, nineteen and a three. Okay, so the three is obviously going to miss. The nineteen will. The nineteen is not going to do damage, but Firkin is going to give you a chance to break the charm. Give me a d20. This is after you've already honked the uh, javelin. Honk honk. So for the javelin, I got a two. Um, for this, I got a nineteen. So that last slap wakes you out of this small little trance that you've been in and saying, you know, what the heck? Oh, I look at at Disco and look, Disco, back at the bar where you hired me. I told you I'm not into girls. I'm not into that. It's not not my king. And no shame for you, but not my thing. And we got a vampire bitch to kill. She tried to burn me. Hush, hush, quiet. Hurry up, get in the closet. Okay, so so let's do let's do one other thing here. <laughs> that was that was yours. Firkin, you had thrown yours. Hold but on, what was I get, what? I'm also at three and two. I would like to take a second attack this round at the vampire that charmed me into trying to hurt my friends. I'm I'm doing that, but you rolled a two on your javelin at Hodar, correct? Correct. Hodar, what is your armor class? Uh, three. Okay, that's not bad. What is your base armor class, though? Your uh, base ba- armor class, you have none, so it's zero. Um, yeah. Modified enemy AC is minus two. I'm, I'm on, I'm on Ferkin's base enemy armor class is 10. I'm going to see what he, he would have needed to roll. It's a 10. Modified enemy class is 3. This is a missile weapon on Hodar. Um, only needed an 8 to hit you. Rolled a 2. Missed. So the, the javelin does miss you. Sometimes when you're throwing at a wizard, you hit on a 2. <laughs> this, is, this is why I just wanted... So I, you just gotta check sometimes, you know. You just you, you just have to you just have to check. Just like the light net at the bar, sometimes you hit on a two. Sometimes you hit on a two. That's right. That's before so, the ugly. That's before the ugly lights come on. That that is correct. That is correct. So Firkin, now you're um, um, you're you're out of the charm. You had another attack to use. What would you like to do? My you and 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 you have a taste of you have a taste of. Ring of perceptual or perpetual tits in your mouth. No, no, thank you. Not and well. That, that 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 is kind of what shocked me out of it. <laughs> uh, but I do have a plus two javelin that I'm gonna throw at that uh vampire. That and, that, va- okay. that vampress. That vampress, and I got I rolled an eleven. Plus a couple of things here. So 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is a 14. 
adjusted. And what is her AC? You have to have a 19 or something to hit her. Yeah, you, it's her modified is three and she is a monster with armor in full plate. Um, and wait, you're actually doing it with a missile weapon. Yeah. Okay. So her base armor class is zero. Base is zero. Okay. Modified armor is minus three. Minus three. Okay. That needs you a 14 is what I got. I have a 21 to try to hit with, uh, he, with, he, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't that good at the formulas. No, oh. um, what, what, you, you have to hit F nine to update. I did. I did. It said I needed a 14, but I'll, I'll go. If you want to go with the turn. Do, 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 do you have the thing with monster with armor as a yes? I, I, either way, he rolled a 13. Yeah. So anyway, um, I yeah, I did not hear them. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, so your 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 javelin sailed past her. Unfortunately, didn't hit her. Um, and um, that 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 is that is what it is. So that was Ferkin, Hodar. What 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 were you gonna do? Uh, blaster with the wand of electricity again. Wand of electricity. The lightning again. wand. Uh, giving her the save with the sixty six again. She will easily save with the 19. Damage is. Ooh. <laughs> There's three of them. That and that and that and that and that. He's six, so 13. Ooh, 13, that is. Is she still flying or is she running around the walls? She's she's still running around the walls and those those lightning bolts that she doesn't have a whole lot of um, you know resistance against is uh, is uh, is a quite is quite strong uh, th that that's that's hurting her she's 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 injured so um, Zuni unfortunately is still paralyzed Firkin did his attacks Hodar is uh, did the lightning bolt Discontech slapped Firkin to wake him up. It is now, it is now um, uh, Drell's in his turn. Um, those two, the, uh, the sword now races immediately back towards, um, back towards Drell's now. Um, and she now has her sword in her hand and she flies towards Hodar, who is the one that is really hurting her right now and takes, takes some swipes Take some swipes at uh, at a Hodar. Quick, quick question, Scott. Does this yeah. mean that 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 if I were to use my movement, I would be within melee? Well, she used all of the, and the time it took to get the sword back to her, <laughs> and for her to walk around the top and then get back to to the ledge where he's on to take the swipes. That's going to be. She's going to be at a stationary point. So, so, so she, it, so she's utilized her movement. She's no longer on the ceiling. Correct. Should, should, should I use my movement to go attack her? I would be in melee. I wouldn't have to use the bow. All you have to do is you have to find a way to get from the dais to the ledge. That's that's what that's the nut you have to solve because do, there's, do, there's do, about, do I have a do I have a jump skill? You you could try to jump it. It would be a dexterity type of thing you would try to do. Um, okay, I, okay. I would, sorry, I, would, sorry. I, would, I would give you a chance to do it, but result, Hodar, result what you're, result just what you're hit, doing. I'm I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I was driving. What are just got hit three times with yeah. uh, with uh, with a plus four bastard sword. Um, so th th this is going to hurt a little bit. I, I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna tell you that right now. Okay. Sure. Hold the horse. This, Hold this, the this, this may have saved you right there. Two ones. I don't know. I've been Eight hit eyes. already. Seven. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven hit points. Uh, down. Okay. Okay. Wizard is down. Um, okay. Almost dead. 
really almost, almost doubled. No, it's, uh, it's, it's not doubled. It's minus, minus 10. ten. Oh yeah, the, yeah. First edition weird rules. Oh, I keep forgetting. Minus ten. Minus better, 10. better better yeah. rules. Better rules on death. She's she's, she's 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 a bit Way she's a bit rules. down. This is now the next round. Zinni, you are you're still paralyzed, but I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a chance right now to roll out of it. You won't be able to attack, but I'll give you a chance to roll out because the sword is no longer hovering above you. It is now in in the vampire's hand. So please give me a save versus paralyzation. It's uh, 14. 14, you are no longer paralyzed. You break out of your out of your paralyzation and you feel and you see that Hodar is next to you with this with this slash and the sword sticking out of his back right now as you um as you kind of break out of your uh, out of your paralyzation you realize that your friend fellow spare spellcaster and hodar the great wizard of eh, is is bleeding out in front of you um Fierkin and discontech or sorry discotech are on the dais Fierkin just you've been able to see all this Fierkin just threw a javelin at at the vampire this time so you think he's not charmed anymore so that's so that's probably a good thing. So you're good, Hodar. Unfortunately, you're down. Firkin, it is your turn. You are no longer charmed. So please declare your intentions. You're both on the dais. Okay. Trails is about thirty feet away, and there's a gap in front of you. Uh, I'm going to draw my shiny new broadsword. Uh, can I get to her? You're 30 feet away, and there's air in front of you. You you would have yeah, to that, find. That's, that's why I was asking about like where she was, because no, okay. she. It, it's not Someone a climbable, is gonna have... a climbable surface. It's not. Someone's going to have to toss the dwarf. If you want to get over there. Okay, so that's not going to happen. Uh, in that case, I will use another one of the plus two javelins. Uh, I've got okay. one attack this round, so I'll be throwing that. Okay, so a plus two javelin. Um, let's just. My, my number says you need a 21 to hit. Your number says a uh, 14. Let's split the difference and say you need a 16 to hit. Okay. Uh, so her AC is minus three. On the missile combat matrix. Yeah. Sorry, my neighbors are having angry sex upstairs. Would it be all these so lucky? All right. Um, adding my stuff onto it. I got a 17. That's a hit. So you're at 1d4 plus 4. Yep. So that's going to be 7 points of damage. Oh, that's a nice hit. She is really, 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 really hurting right now. Really hurting. Discotech, your chance. So I, I roll it. I roll a twenty-one to sneak back into shadows. Okay. To try and position myself for a backstab with my bow. Okay. As much as possible. Okay. I rolled a seven. I rolled a seventeen, but I get a plus four. The seventeen should be should be good enough to hit. Okay, so I I roll a three, but I get well. That's three plus. That's at least that's at least nine. It's three plus your dexterity plus the arrow. So three okay, plus your dexterity so, is three. So that's six. Six plus the arrow is two. That's seven hit points of damage. Well, well, well. No, that's three plus three plus two is eight times three. Backstab. Correct. Yeah. 24. So that's 24. And she goes poof, disappears into a gaseous cloud. Uh, am, I, am I correct in that though? Like I wasn't. No, no, you're correct. right. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. You're right. And that cloud kind of hovers and mists a little bit and then starts moving back towards the dais and then starts going through little cavern, uh, going through like little, little. Crevices. Tiny little holes and crevices, and you see 
into this diet. She's a lich. And, She's a lich. And, 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 and you kind of look like it and say, you know, this dais and stuff on top actually kind of looks like a coffin. Can I, can I, cause that I, that's where, coffin. that's where I'm hitted. Can I throw the lid? That's where I'm standing. Yeah. You're, you're standing, you're standing on it. So yeah, she's gone. The, uh, even the, uh, the sword clampers down to the, the sword clambers down to the ground as well. Without mentality, it's not going after you, Zinni. Um, it's kind of strangely enough. And of course, you've all left kind of Hodar. It is one big hunk of solid stone on top where, of it. Where, where, where is Hodar in, in relation? Can I, can I make Hodar not die? If you so choose to do, you can watch him bleed out in front of your feet, or you can be a good cleric and heal him. I'm a good cleric. I'm going to heal him. Okay. So, so Zinni is going to administer aid to, to Hodar. Discotech, Don, Don, uh, Firkin, and you, see all, this gas. With, with, you with see all this with gas. With my assistance, yeah, with my assistance. I have it's, a pickaxe, all kind of, and this is nothing but stone. Nothing but stone, that's correct. And, and, and you have the back of my human tits. So you start wailing away at the uh, stone coffin. Well, no, no, I, I was, I was, I was trying. I was thinking more like trying to, like you. Is, you, there, is there a way to like slide the slab, or do we need to? Like, yeah, break? that that's that's what I was thinking. Like, oh, you, you want use, to slide the slab? Use use, use my. What is my, your my, strength? My, 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 my busty girth to eighteen. Eighteen. All right. I want you to roll me a percentile dice. Uh, 17. 17, Disco? Beerkin. Yes. Uh, I got a 98. 98. You were able to, together, with Disco's ample assets uh, motivating you, you were able to push off the top of the slab, and inside you see this beautiful maiden Slowly reconstructing itself. Can I get a sneak attack? Completely asleep. Eyes shut. We're trying to need regenerate a itself. Yeah. Can, can I get a sneak attack? I don't, is um, a dagger made of wood? Isn't that how you finish off a vampire? That's... You, you, you can get a sneak attack, but... You know, it, it is going to take something to, um, you know, understanding that this is a vampire, you would need some type of wooden stake or something else wood. like that. Well, I was, I was hoping to, at, at the very least, disassociate the head from the rest of the body. Yes, you can. You can take an attack on trying to trying to disincorporate the head. You can do that. She's unconscious and out. I rolled, an eight, I rolled an 18. You were able to get the head off. Firkin, are you going to ask Zinni for one of his wooden stakes? Uh, I can do that, or I can just break the, the shaft with my pickaxe and turn it into a stake. That works. That also works. That also works. <laughs> and as you... The head comes off, but as you put the stake through the heart of the vampire... The head, the disincorporated head shrieks and blood gushes out of every orifice that you could possibly see. And especially the pussy, especially that part as the rest of her starts to slowly turn to dust and then slowly fade away, fade away. And then the draft that was there is completely gone. And this sure, sure, sure it would be nice dead. if we figured out how to get out of here, though. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you you do see several scrolls in front of you. Um, Hodar, who's now awake, sees that at least five or six of them are scrolls of a uh, couple. There's Tele a scroll of gate. Dimension door. There's, yeah, there is a score. There is a scroll of teleport that you would be able to. That you would be able to, uh, even though it's higher than your casting level. You can cast it from the from the scroll, and uh, since you're ninth level, you can cast up to. There's a chance of success that you would have to do, but it's nine twenty nine. So we've been going on for a while, 
And uh, it, it, I'm it, it's, that, it's actually 1029. Sorry, 1029. Uh, so I'm going to say that, uh, that you're able to successfully cast the spell uh, after looting the place. And um, you, you were able to successfully, um, by, by, way of a, by way of a teleport scroll, successfully get yourself out after looting. There's lots of nice stuff in here. Um, I mean, I mean, seriously, nice stuff as in like, you know, ma a manual of gainful exercise, the manual of quickness of action, the tome of clear thought, a clone of uh, tome of leadership, a tome of understanding. And of course, the Demonicon of, of Igvil. So well beyond uh, what uh, seventh level characters can do with right now, but, um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, a fantastic haul uh, in an abbreviated fight. Uh, but um, seeing as how we've run 30 minutes over, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there. Let's uh, go ahead and give our, let's go ahead and give our final thoughts from a successful, uh, from a successful fight. Um, unfortunately, Zinni didn't get to attack that much, getting paralyzed by, uh, by a chaotic evil bastard sword plus four, whose soul, literally, it, it's, it, it's exactly what it says. We're not making it up when it says, it's a chaotic evil bastard sword plus four with an intelligence of 17 and ego. I, I, I was going to say, what happened if I said I wanted to go back and loot the sword? Its special purpose is to slay clerics. <laughs> that's 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 what it was meant to do is to slay clerics. So unfortunately, whenever Zinni was close enough, it just leaps into action all by itself. And uh, the only modifications to core AD and D rules was that I gave you a save uh, on the vampire uh, from draining two levels. Because if not, then you know you guys would be fighting it third level instead of at seven. Oh yeah, level. no, we'd have been dead fast. If, if we so, but but it's it's dead. just uh, it, it's just. I I I normally like to give a save at that, and to an, to a, to a creature that can hit you three times, and it's two levels each time they hit, and she's a thirteenth level fighter, so they're gonna hit you pretty much all the time, one round, and you're the second level. That's that's why we like you as a DM, though, Scott, because you're actually like. Well, it, it's, I, 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 I want to be able to see the story advance itself, you know, to be able to understand exactly what we're seeing. And this was also part of an exercise in understanding the mechanics of 5e versus 1e. So let's give, let's give our final thoughts. We'll start off with, uh, with uh, you, Blake. Uh, what are your final thoughts? Disco, disco duck. I want to know what I can get out of here before I get out of here. <laughs> Lots of there's lots of good goodies in here. There's even an okay. artifact, believe it or not. Leaving an so, artifact. So I can I, I I rolled I rolled up I don't know as seven to hide in shadows. I want to go get the artifact. Outstanding, outstanding. <laughs> um Fearkin, final thoughts. Um I I'm remembering why I enjoyed second edition so much more than first. Uh, I, I am grateful for the opportunity to be a player instead of the forever DM. So I thank you for that. But I, I'm going to be staying away from first edition again. Wow. The yeah. too much math. Yeah. It is, what it, it is for expensive. What it's worth, I actually did like the difference. Like it, it really was. Uh, it's 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 honestly too many rules for me. It slows things down. It slows the pacing down too much. It does. It, it's, it, does. It, it, slow, it slows the pacing for the players down. First edition is one of those that's much more, we've, we've talked about this on Tuesdays, it's much more in the player's favor than in the DM's favor. It, 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 you're right. It, there, are, there are so many tables and so many rules in so many different ways. It does, it does kind of tighten things down a little bit. Zinni, um, I'm sorry that your character didn't really get to cast a lot of spells and to do a lot of things. It got paralyzed by that thing, but I would like to hear your final thoughts. I still think we should have just chew. Lives in the cave forever. <laughs> and that's fine too. You don't need treasures, just have fun. So, so it's just like, you know, like the Zen cleric. I'm gonna have to think of a pantheon of gods and Greyhawk, that is all about the Zen. Buddha. And then, Buddha. There you go. There you go. I, I have to find out some way of having a Zen cleric. That's was like, there a need hmm. to blast the door and to fire everywhere and 
kill a fucking vampire when the door says, don't open the door. Well, if, no, if you were happy, it, no, no, it's, 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 it's a fair question. You know, you have, you have a roof over your head. Maybe you can find food to eat. You just kind of, you know, get to know the neighbors and, you know, maybe you can find a little home. They maybe yeah. leave. Yeah. I don't know. Just yeah. Yeah. who, who, so who was, who was your deity? I have no idea who was my deity. <laughs> <laughs> one of the good ones. That, that's all. Just, just one of the chill ones, you know, Not, nothing too bad. Frank, Hodar, what do you think? What is, well, I, I always like second edition or first edition, but the math is always daunting, especially for new players. Uh, but other than that, um, I like the fact that you can die at any moment in time. Uh, I like this scenario. I've had it for years. It was what, WinterCon 76, yeah, Winter 76, the yeah. tournament scenario. Uh, so yeah, I've had S4 forever. I kind of knew where we were at and kind of knew where we were going. So I'm like, eh, I'm just going to go ahead and sit in the background. So yeah, player knowledge versus character. Plus, knowledge. plus it's always good to see Scott. Love you guys. Love you guys. No, I've already got a poster of him hanging <laughs> over my bed. So oh, over your bed, like the mirror. <laughs> yes. It's in between the mirrors. Because it's the full body mirror, but it's Scott's head sticking but, but out. No, I, so. I mean I mean that without any. No, it, it's always good to see it, Scott. <laughs> well, you 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 know how much uh, I I I got nothing but love for this crew. I I, I really do. Um, and and I miss playing with you guys. Uh, but uh, but but you know it, it's 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 always fun. And you're right. First edition is very math centric. This you know are the tables that you have to go on all the time uh, how, how many margaritas did you get through just one no that that was only that was only one we didn't even do psionic combat which is the other side of this you know it's just table after table after table after table after table um and, and it does get to be daunting uh which is why 5e has been such a hit um, to try to simplify all those rules and such as that. And, and, and I, you know, did the best job I could with, with spreadsheets that took as much of the math away to where all you had to do was just put in a couple of things. Yeah, and if, you, if, you hit. Did them, if you did them right. Well, you know, I, 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 I probably should have spent more time, but I was tired. You know, I can only, you know, I, I, I was just tired. But, Brought uh, to you by our sponsor. Don Julio. Don Julio. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it, it is always good to see you guys. And thank you all for uh, for being here and to do this uh, first edition, um, you know, um, look back to look forward, seeing where D&D has been. It helps us all understand where D&D may be going in the future. So with that, I'll go ahead and uh, we can all give our little wave, say goodbye to our audience. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. And we will bid you all Adieu, and have a good time. Happy holidays to all, and uh, find a way to play with your friends. <laughs>